Welcome, four days with Chase, and we are really, really excited. <laughs> you said excited. We are. It's been a. They can't hear you. Oh. Details. Welcome to Four Days with Chase, annual fundraiser for Soul Words to support all the amazing work that they do year round. And it's been a crazy day, crazy in the best of ways. In a good way. In a great way. Rabbi Taub, how are you? How was your day? I want to start by reading some beautiful donations. Um, I think we're just getting started. That's the, the feeling I got this we're afternoon. In the words of Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke, we have yet begun to fight. So, um, I was actually, I don't know if it's, it's too bad, it seems like it makes sense, but I was realizing that we have four days, I had no idea that she'd come up with that to pinpoint that. Because the mic is on. Is it on now? Great. Okay. Fine. Awesome. So I was real. Could I, sh should we start? Pretend to start over? Just keep rolling. It's live. It's live. Yeah, it's live. You just keep rolling. So I, w I was thinking from a production standpoint, as far as the content we put out and the guests and the discussions we had, the four days was a great idea. It was a masterful idea. I'd do it again. I would do it next week. From a fundraising perspective, it was a little bit too stressful because. I see people uh, like to show up. Uh, the 11th hour. The 11th hour. But we've been rocking and rolling. The momentum has been building. And, uh, yeah, today was a very, very strong day. Could you give us some insight on that? Because there's a halukki deus when it comes to fundraising. Is desperation the right angle? Or no. is it success? I guess it depends on, what would you say? Desperation is never good. Desperation is repellent. It scares people Except away. Except in 11213. One you mean in Crown Heights? Is there a demographic that is more excited by the Crown Heights doesn't time? like desperation. No way. No. Not the, Crown well, Heights I, likes winners. Lubavitchers like winners. We like to... Don't, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Oh. We are conquering. No, there's no demographic that likes a uh, desperate cause. But they do like excitement. And yes, we are people in, love drama. Yeah. Yes, they love a story. And we have had a... In a good way. In a good way. Yeah. And we've had a roller coaster. Yeah. So, and, but I... Yeah. Having said that... I am and legitimately very confident that we will reach our goal before the end of the night. You know what? One of the big uh, topics that we discussed, I think it was even the first night, was Amunah and Betochen, Shara Betochen, trust. And uh, <laughs> this whole campaign has been run on trust. So I spent the day at the aisle, actually. And a friend of mine who was a shliach overseas saw me. And he, sees, he says, in mitten campaign, like you're in the middle of your campaign, you're at the aisle. I said, where else should I be? I did make calls to people. You know, I have a cell phone, so I made calls to people while I was at the aisle. But I spent the day at the aisle. And uh, we, have, uh, we have very deep pockets, you know. Trust but verify. You've got to do your part. Yeah, well, you're in you your case, the hishtadlis is going to the aisle, interestingly. For some, Ishtadlus, they think and of... maybe at some point, if I drink enough Diet Coke, I might uh, loosen up and tell you what I asked the Rebbe when I was at the aisle. All right. But we'll see. Cliffhanger. Speaking, speaking of which, I'm just going to make a bracha. Baruch There's uh, old Yiddish expressions that, uh, expression that uh, Jews don't rely on miracles. They say to Hillam. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't be... Don't... Don't be so wild, you know, do something conventional, like say Tehillim. Very good, yeah. And not the Andres or Tehillim. Oh, it's a, you know, that's from Yechen and Gordon. Oh, is it? Yeah. The, from Yud Shvat. The Andres or Tehillim, yeah, it's a story from Yud Shvat. I, I love that story. Now we should tell it really quick, even though we need to do the heavy hitters. But, uh, Chaim, you and I could go on tangents within tangents within tangents for hours. We've got to do the heavy hitters. These people gave big money. But I'm gonna t while you're pulling up the heavy hitters, I want to tell the Yechen and Gordon story. Yud Shvat, Tavshin Yud, we're talking about when the previous Rebbe was not well. So Chassidim were saying to Hillam, they were reading Psalms uh, to try to elicit uh, a miraculous healing for him. It was uh, Shabbos Parshas Bay, and they found him in his room. He wasn't well, and uh, so they were saying to Hillam. And then the news came that he had passed. And Yechen and Gordon, who was the Gabbai there, he walked into the shul. And how did he inform everybody of the terrible news that uh, the Fidik Rebbe had actually passed? He said, Yes, Dafman Zogin, 
the andere sort Tehillim. Now we have to say the other kind of Tehillim, meaning to say not different chapters of Tehillim, but when a Yid, whatever situation he is in or she is in, uh, needs to express something, whether it's the hope for healing or hope for comfort when, when one suffered a loss, God forbid, or, or even when one is celebrating something, you know, good tidings, whatever it is, how do we express it? Through, through Tehillim. Okay, heavy hitters. But we're talking, yes, heavy yeah. hitters, uh, some beautiful ones that came in today, and not necessarily in any particular order. I want to read a few of them. Uh, an anonymous, um, first of all, uh, Esther Necha Miller, Ten thousand and eight dollars. Thank you for your wisdom and compassion. That was a big jump. I know who that is, um, and that was a big jump from what she gave last year. Oh. And that was incredibly generous. Would it be too much to say that giving to Soul Words enables one to give more the next year? Oh, just like when you hosted my live stream last year, well, the first year you got married, and then you hosted the live stream the second year, and you had a child. And so this person gave to Soul Wars last year, and now they were able to give even more this year. Yeah, but in, like yeah. in general, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, I have more responsibilities. How can I give? But somehow right. the giving, the creating the space creates a Kaylee for yeah, more. That sounds good, yeah. I'll co-sign that. I, I'd Anonymous donated ten thousand dollars in honor of. And I know who the anonymous is actually, because my daughter Tybo called me today while I was at the aisle. I was standing by the vending machines, asking me if the wire came in. That was a a five thousand dollar wire, effectively being doubled, matched as ten thousand. I know who it is. Which is a reminder that... And they wrote an incredible dedication. Can you read the dedication? In honor of Rabbi Shastab, who has done so much for us by bringing the depth and beauty of Hasidus and the Hasidic lifestyle to a level that is understood by all who want to grow. Yeah, that was beautiful. I was, yeah. in addition to the another anonymous gift, which donation, was very helpful, you know? thank you, Rabbi Taub. Um, another, uh, you, you have a high, I would say, uh, the highest I've seen from campaigns that I've looked at, uh, a high number of anonymous donors. And, really? Um, I don't look at other campaigns, but uh, do they not have so many anonymouses? I don't know if it's my imagination. It would seem like you have a high percentage of anonymous, and mm. I think that says something uh, unique in, in a positive way about the work you do and you know, people's relationship. You with know them. what I'm wondering? Sometimes when I'm like, you know, people come up to me all the time like, you know, in public, and they're like, okay, can I talk to you? But sometimes people come over to me, and they talk to me, and then they'll like step away from me. And I'll be like, well, especially I should mention Bachram do this like that's the most often situation where this vulnerability hangover well it, it's not even about the vulnerability they're afraid of they'll step away and i'll be like what's up and they're like i don't want people to see me talking to you <laughs> they'll think i have problems <laughs> so i don't know maybe if that's the anonymous thing at some point tonight yeah. i want you to tell- why would any why would any normal person whose life is going well be into shay Staub's material right okay. at some point tonight i would love for you to tell the joke about what do you care if these orphans have children? We'll tell that. Yeah, I mean, it's a shambling at it. Okay. Heavy hitters. Heavy hitters. Friendship Circle of Michigan, $5,000. Yes. We and thank- they also wrote a dedication. Mm-hmm. We th- you don't trust that I'll do my job. <laughs> I'm, doing- I'm just remembering fondly the events of earlier today where I read each ded- dedication and savored the kind words. So I'm just, I'm reminiscing right now. We thank Rabbi Taub for creating his revolutionary class on parenting, which has helped thousands of parents. And thank you for reading that, so that I could say, Friendship Circle of Michigan is thanking me for creating the revolutionary parenting class. They call it the, my, their words, not mine. They call it revolutionary. But everyone should know, that it's only because of Friendship Circle of Michigan that the parenting course exists because they came to me with the concept and they funded the whole um, the the exploratory phase of it when we we're working it out. Okay. Um, I, Mayor Schmuckler, $4,000. Amazing. From Jets, L.A. Good friend. That Mayor Schmuckler. Okay. Yeah. A few. From okay. L.A., yeah. And I'm not sure if I read this last night. Sachs family, $3,600. Yeah, from Five Towns. Awesome. 
quite a few thirty six hundred dollars, like six in a row. It's I'm a Jewish saying. number. People give eighteen hundred, gets doubled to thirty six hundred. It's like a it's a beautiful number. A high thing, yeah. Um, yeah, anonymous thirty six hundred. Another anonymous thirty six hundred. Another anonymous thirty six hundred. Really? This is from the lot of anonymous thirty six hundred email list. Uh, Miriam and Mutti Sandman, three thousand dollars in honor of Gvaldic. Rabbi Taub. Gvaldic. Anonymous, two thousand sixteen dollars for Shlema for my mom, Chantel Bas Sara. Chabad on campus international, two thousand dollars. Hatzlacha Rabba. Yeah, Chabad on campus. And uh, it's a great moisid. The S Cohen Family Fund, two thousand dollars. Another anonymous here, two thousand dollars. <laughs> there are a lot of anonymouses. Wow. Maisha okay. Simpson, two thousand dollars. Very cool. I think I know who that is. Yeah, very nice. Maisha Simpson. Is it Maisha Sim- Simpson? The tall. I have to but- check up the email. And make sure which one. <laughs> Thank you, Maisha Simpson. Um, and we have a lot of. You know, we we just read a a, a donation from Chabad. On Campus International, yes. which just reminds me, uh, Yossi Gordon, I think he was mentioned the other night. Because I was at his shiva, and I, I, his father's shiva on Crown Street, and mm-hmm. as I was walking out, we saw Dublin's right, sister. Right, right, right. And then the guy from Ocean Parkway gave $1,000. Right, right. And you guys, if you haven't been here all four nights, you're going to miss, miss these references. Yeah, we're not going to give the back for each one. We can't fill in everything, but yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so Rabbi Yisrael Gordon, yeah. uh, Yossi's father, Yechen Gordon's son. Right, we mentioned Yechen Gordon about the A lot the of Gordon name right. dropping tonight. Yeah. Um, and you, by the way, should I, can I mention one thing? Uh-huh. At 7.30, Mirza Hashem, I have a plane to catch out of JFK. I'm flying to LAX. I'm going to be spending Shabbos in Tarzana for the Shabbos yard site of... Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon. Assuming. Yeshua bin Yomin. Gordon, all the way who was a mentor and a teacher and a friend of mine. So a lot of Gordons. Yeah. And we should mention uh, Nachi Gordon because uh, we had the Meaningful Minute team. That's right. We're going to go check out some we'll of the teams We'll check out the Meaningful minute. minute team in a minute and see how they did. Okay, anyways, Yisrael Gordon, all the way Shalom. Oh, so if you, if you, know, if you knew Rabbi Yisrael Gordon, there was a niggin that he cherished and loved and he taught every summer to uh, the yeshivas uh, Kais in Morristown. And I was uh, also at the Shiva, and his grandson gave me a copy of some of his favorite Nagunim um, that they printed, uh, and, and w- which I in- enjoyed to sing with him on Shabbos. And we have a very special guest in the studio that's going to give us a beautiful rendition of this Nigan Hachayenu Kel. Oh, wow. Our special guest now on camera. It's Ellie Marcus. Oh, sorry. I stole your thunder. Okay. Chaim, go ahead. Go go ahead. Ellie Marcus. (laughs) Way to go. You know what, actually? Yeah. Marcus, impossible dream. Oh, it's a reference. You weren't even there. (laughs) You weren't even, you heard about that. Yeah. Ellie, remember that? Very well. Very, very well. That was the last uh, gig we did together in LA. At the, where is it? Beverly Hills at the... Yeah, that's right. The Beverly Hilton. That's right. That's right. And I and I spoke about Ed Ames on the telethon singing Impossible Dream from Man of La Mancha. And Rabbi Kunin got excited and he made a request. He said, Mark, it's impossible. But Achayenu Kel Shir Hagaula is the impossible dream made possible. That's what the that's song's right. about. That's right. We finally got David on camera. Did By the we? way, no, he's not on camera. Cut away, cut away. By the way, throughout David's tonight, fixing Ellie's mic right now. Anyone yeah. who uh, <laughs> donates uh, an effective donation of four hundred, so two hundred dollars, yeah. you can add uh, a request for a song, or at least a piece uh, of a song that Ellie will play. What's throughout a piece the night. of a song? A stanza. We're not gonna. We don't have enough time to do. But we can't play whole songs. We can't. Play, but we're raising we're money. We're gonna do over our here. best. We can't play exactly. whole songs. But you can put in. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellie Marcus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I want to um, just before I left the house. Um, I hope I don't regret this, but I grabbed two things that I want to show everybody uh, because 
we got to make the push and bisbus or itzris. And in the it's spirit a good of Gandhi reference, hi, appreciate it. Ready for another reference? In yeah. the spirit of Alts was a hub and stub. Oh, I brought two special mm. things, and I'd like to introduce it in the following way. Yesterday, you read a, last night. You read a beautiful. Now the letter. devil just signaled that you can stop stalling because Ellie's <laughs> mic works. But t- we'll pick it up later. We'll pick it up later. Pick it up okay, later. fine. All right. The beautiful letter, right. and you left everybody. The house. Ellie Marcus. Ellie Marcus. <laughs> I have the, you got the words over there, right? Yeah. Okay. Can, can you share that with me? Share the wealth. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Don't read. The dedications are just beside it, so. I will not read it. No, promise. Yeah. I actually learned this uh, nigan from Rabbi Gordon when I was 13 years old in YSP in Morristown. They made a special point of teaching it to the Bachram, so... Achaye nuke Ademo ye is gale Oise beso ye Achaye nuke Ademo ye is gale Oise beso ye Shenizik ke vechei nosiya, mechev lehamoshiya. Taki fi mi yomavar du du mo, bison shir leyu mo. Shenizik ke vechei nosiya, mechev lehamoshiya. Takifim
<laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Um, is it okay if I interact with Ellie? We have that capacity to do that. Amazing. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I I don't remember how many campaigns you've done with me, but you've been, every campaign you've been with me, and uh, I said last night, and I'm going to say it again, that you're here because, in my opinion, uh, in addition to your beautiful voice and your your charisma and the fact that you're you're fun to listen to. Uh, really, the the main thing that I value about you is that you're a real guy. Thank you. And thank you. And I'll tell you, I tell you like this: people say about me, and I've learned to start taking compliments. What they like is that I'm authentic. They like that I'm a real guy. So I feel like I endeavor to be the rabbinic version. Of what Ellie Marcus is to the Jewish music world, that's what I try to be in the rabbi world. That's and I big, mean that 100% compliment. sincerely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you. I know it sounds like a funny thing, but it's, uh, it's actually, maybe people will understand the parallels that I'm drawing. Okay. So we have a segment now about, uh, yeah, can we start the segment? Tonight's uh, topic, our first hour, is about uh, the future of the Jewish internet. So... I don't, I don't even know if this is possible, but David, I just got a, a direct message, which I screenshotted and I sent to you 10 seconds ago. In two minutes, I'll be ready to pull up. Okay, great. And these, these things are happening in real time. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Jewish internet, about this wildly powerful tool that is really only existed in the, in the past... Uh, 20 years, as far, as far as regular people's lives. Uh, last night, Chaim pulled up a video of me speaking, uh, for, I think from the year 2000, and I was talking about technology back then, and it's so funny because I was talking about the technology that w that existed in, in, in you know 22 years ago, 23 years ago, and it seemed so advanced back then, and uh, compared to what we have today, you know, that's uh, that's nothing. Today, there's so much information, and it's available constantly, nonstop. And uh, there's information available nonstop, but there's also misinformation available nonstop. And disinformation, which is more uh, malicious than just plain misinformation. Um, and it's an incredible age that we live in. But... One thing that I've tried to do is to harness that tool, and I just want to share um, a – oh, you have dark mode on your thing, David? Is that the, that's the screenshot I sent you? What is it? What am I looking at? You sent the – you have the screenshot ready? You have it ready. Okay, and, and you have it with me with, like, the scratches where I scratched off – okay, because I scratched stuff off. So I want to, I want to explain the background. First of all, uh, I think Ellie Nash was talking about on night one when he was here why I need money, and one of the things is human resources. We need talented people to uh, to build up the staff at SoulWords because I'm, I'm just one person. I can't do everything. Um, one of the incredible staff members who we added this year has made an incredible difference specifically in the area of using the tools of the internet. So we brought aboard uh, a young woman, Shifra Rabisky, who you, you may not know her name, and please don't poach her and hire her to do your social media, but she's the one who's behind the incredible growth of the Soul Word social media this year, whether it's in Instagram or TikTok or uh YouTube, and she also handles the WhatsApps and the emails and all, all of that stuff. She put up a clip today, uh, which was a clip from last night. She took like 30 seconds. She's a genius at figuring out exactly the 30 seconds that is going to resonate with people. So she took a 30-second clip from last night. I don't even remember why I said this, but I mentioned, I said, I'm not a rabbi for everyone. I don't need to be for everyone. You know who I care about? I want to resonate with the disenfranchised people, with the people who feel like that they don't like any other rabbis, but they're, they're willing to tolerate me. They think I'm an okay guy. I'm safe enough for them. That's who I care about connecting with. And uh, so she put up, so Schiffer put up this, this clip on Instagram, 
I didn't even know that she put up the clip. How did I find out about the clip? While I was at the oil today, and I was frantically, I don't want to say frantically, because a little if you have been talking, nothing should be frantic. I was busily texting and messaging people to get through to them, to ask them if you haven't donated yet. And by the way, if you haven't donated yet, charity.com slash RST, please give. Uh, and I'm from Chicago, so give early, give often. Um, but as I was like checking all my messages, I saw a direct message came in from a young woman. And literally a minute ago... Well, by this, I've been talking for five minutes. So six minutes ago, she just responded to me because I asked her. I asked her permission to share what she sent me. Can we pull it up now? It is okay. Fine. So she writes, and I scratched out the identifying information. That it is scratched out. You can't see anything, right? Okay. Uh, it says, "This is me." What is she saying? This is me. The clip where it says, "I'm trying to speak to the disenfranchised people who." Don't listen to other rabbis, but for some reason, they feel that I'm a safe person. So she responded to that clip, and she wrote, This is me. I am not religious anymore, and a lot of rabbis make me feel triggered, but not you. What you say about Yiddishkeit makes me feel proud. And it reminds me that Yiddishkeit isn't all or nothing, and just because I don't keep Shabbos or kosher doesn't mean that I can't learn more or enjoy the other parts. So thank you, heart. And then she wrote, This made me feel so seen and validated. And that's an emoji with his eyes welling up because he's getting misty. And, uh, okay, so you can take that off. At, at any rate, so I sent a voice note because I didn't have time to text because I was trying to get a hold of everyone in the world today. And I just said, thank you. That means everything to me. The whole soul words exists for you. And I said to her, when you're ready to return to the community, I want you to know the community is waiting for your leadership because what you know, what you learned the hard way the community needs to learn from you so it doesn't happen to the next person. And can I have permission to share this? And then she wrote me back. This made me cry. Yes, you can share it. I look up to you so much, you have no idea. Well, I look up to you so much. And, um, yeah, okay. At any, at any rate, that would only that whole exchange was only possible because of the tools of the internet. But since I'm talking, they say in education, show, don't tell. So I've been talking enough. I've been telling. I, I need to show. I want to pull up a clip that when my I, I this, does this sound self serving? What a narcissist! He's about to say this. This is awful. My first million view clip on social media. Which oh, oh hold on a second before you pull it up. I just want to make one more comment. Schiffer, Schiffer Rabisky is our social media genius, but this particular clip, I watch, and she's the one who puts all the clips up on, on Soul Words. This particular clip, though, I didn't even know until a few weeks ago, was created by Yusuf Grimberg from 3 to 1 Motion, who, along with Shamay Khain, has been running the show over here. And I, the 3 to 1 Motion is where I go for all my video needs, always, and live streaming or whatever it is. Yusrol who um, is also good friends, childhood friends with my son-in-law, Maishi David. Hi, Maishi. Uh, Yisrael made that clip because they were doing the live stream at the Gimel Tamas event in Cedarhurst and Chabad of the Five Towns that we did. And Yisrael heard that 30 seconds and he was like, that's it, that's the clip. And, you know, Yisrael's young, he's a millennial. I'm Generation X, so... Yeah, I don't understand these things, but Yisrael is a, is a millennial. And he grabbed that 30-second clip, and he sent it to Nachi Gordon, Meaningful Minute, and this was a million-view clip. Go ahead. He was a forensic psychologist for the San Francisco Police Department, Jerome Mato. He did an interview in the New Yorker magazine, and he spoke about the fact that he used to do the forensic work when people would jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Unfortunately, it was very common. And he would have to prove that Jump 
that I've seen that a hundred times and know it on the dress. Nothing new. But then I read the note and it completely shook me to my core. It said, I'm walking to the bridge now. If one person stops me on the way and says hello, I'm turning around and coming home. Do not underestimate the fact that you can be that person for somebody else. You can be the one who cares. You can be the one who reaches out to somebody else. For the world, you may be one person, but the one person you may be the world. Okay, great. Thank you for playing that. And, uh, yeah, again, you know, that was... I, from an event, a Gimel Tamas event we did at Chabad of the Five Towns, and I think the event was like three hours long. And uh, it's so interesting, though, that short clip, which was a minute, um, had so much uh, impact. And it's, it's it's fascinating today the way that, that people think. And um, we need to adapt these tools or, or, or wield these tools. You know, if this is the way that people communicate, instead of bemoaning it, um, we need to uh, harness it and use it for spreading Torah messages. And that's, the, that's what we try to do at Soul Words. Uh, now, one of the things also that happens uh, when we're wielding these tools is you start to realize that sometimes um, <laughs> I try really hard to... Um, not pander so i would never do a whole talk that was just corny jokes i would do corny jokes interspersed with guidance and wisdom and spiritual insight but when you're doing little clips sometimes you only have enough space for the corny joke so if you could pull up the three envelopes that was 1.1 million not just 1 million 1.1 million views it's just a silly corny joke but i'm going to tell you when we come back why why i'm very proud of it 1.1 million view joke you have it the three envelopes of a big company. And on his first day, he met his predecessor, the guy, the CEO, who just got fired. And the outgoing CEO uh, says to him, says, good luck, I'm going to fill in my uh, shoes over here. Listen, if you have a problem that you don't have an answer for, here are three envelopes. And if you can't solve the problem, uh, come back live. Okay, I'm sorry. By the way, I... Uh, I was just told that it was choppy. I got a text from my daughter saying it was choppy. Why didn't I get like a hundred texts? I, I'm assuming that everybody who texts me is watching this right now. But yeah, apparently the sound of the videos was choppy. Are we going to be able to fix that or should we just adapt? Adapt, overcome, improvise. Okay, they're going to work on the choppiness of those clips. Great. And I even had another clip to show you, but that's the nature of live streaming sometimes things don't always go the way you planned all right so anyways i t it was a corny little joke and the reason that i shared it with you even though it was just a silly joke was because sometimes one of the things we do with social media um is this might sound trite but we make a kiddush hashem and what does a kiddush hashem mean it means many things, but one definition of a Kiddush Hashem is simply that people should see somebody that they identify as a Torah observant Jew and say, that person is a good egg. He's a good guy. I like him. And it was just a silly joke, but I don't know. Do you have the document of the TikTok comments, which is like a multi-multi-page document? Okay, if we can pull that up. And just look at some of them. It's absolutely like mind-boggling. The comments that we got on TikTok, um, it's 99%. I mean, it, it appears from the comments, at least appears to me, that 99% of the comments are from non-Jews. And uh, that's that's also what I mean by a Kiddush Hashem. Just the fact that you have uh, so many people seeing Jewish content that they recognize as being from a Jewish person 
Is that the, those are social media comments? Are those the TikTok comments? Okay. Is there any way that I could read them? Um, no, I can't even read them. Uh, my eyes are not that good. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. All right. So go to the next one. People just have to glance at them. What if I got up and walked over? Would that scare you, David? It would scare you if I got up, even if I picked up my mic. It's a cordless mic, you know. They don't want to let me get up out of here. I'm stuck in the penalty box. Okay. There's like a hundred pages of these. Can we like go go to another page? Okay. I can't read these because they're on a monitor like 15 feet from me. But um, these are like random comments that people made because I told a joke and they were like, wow, I like this guy. Um, I don't know if all these comments were on the joke, by the way. Some of the comments were on some of the other uh, TikTok videos that I did. Um, at this point, is the sound going to work if we pull up the third TikTok video? Or the, fir the third? Uh... No, it's not working, but they're working on it. Okay. All right. So want to just show a couple more pages from the TikTok? Do you have a couple more pages of the TikTok stuff? You going to come to the Zoom? One, two minutes? Two minutes for coming to the Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up my spiel over here. And if the, you do get the sound working for the for the social media clips, let me know. And I'll uh, just wrap up my my uh, presentation on uh, the future of the Jewish Internet. When Mashiach comes, it says that the world will be covered with the knowledge of God Oh, the video's ready. Okay, I was in the middle of a really heavy quote right there. The world we cover. Yeah, okay, so the, just let me uh, naturally segue into it. Uh, all, all the videos are ready, only one of them. All of them, any one that I want. Okay, so when Mashiach comes, the Ramam says this is actually from the prophet Isaiah, that the world will be full of the knowledge of God, like the waters cover the ocean bed. Now, that sounds like poetry, the world will be full of the knowledge of God, like the waters cover the ocean bed. But in today's day and age, you can see how it's not just uh, a metaphor. Literally today, knowledge, information, is covering the entire earth. Now, it's not yet all knowledge of God. There's some other stuff on the internet besides knowledge of God. But we're working on it. And that's why I always say to people, be a creator. If you're using the internet, don't use it passively. Never use the internet to entertain you. That's a very dangerous situation to be in. Whenever you pick up a device, you need to be in the driver's seat. You use it, it doesn't use you. And one of the ways to make sure that you're using technology instead of it using you is to be a creator and to use it as a tool to make stuff and to spread messages and, and to do what I try to do, which is teach people cool stuff with, uh, with the internet. So when Mashiach comes, we're going to have all that knowledge, like all the Wi-Fi that's full of all the great Torah teachings is literally going to be covering the world. Now they tell me the sound is working. And let's pull up one more clip. It's an Instagram clip, which is probably, it's called uh, Spiritual versus Religious. It's not yet at a million. Shifra posted it like a week or two ago. But like every time I look at it, it has like, no, not that one. Not that one. Not that clip. Not that clip, no, because we already tried that and it didn't work, but we're going to, but if you're going to take a long time loading the other clip, I'll just roll with this clip. Just roll with this one. Can we show any clip? No, we have to go to the Zoom. All right, so that's the nature of the internet, especially when you do it live, but you guys get the point. At any rate, we're, uh, David, tell me what we're doing. Zoom, we're going to Zoom. Okay. Oh, okay. We have our Zoom guest. So everyone can see her? Can they hear her? Why don't you say hi and see if everyone can hear you? I can't hear her. Are you muted? Maybe you're muted. I was muted. Hi. Ah, okay. Oh, Baruch Hashem. Okay. Was, uh, we have Mrs. Rivka Krinsky, who um, last year... I'm going to just say, probably you're going to be caught off guard that I'm going to say this. Last year and the year before, she led a very successful team in our campaign, and she didn't lead a team this year. But I'm going to say this as a praise to her. You know why she couldn't lead a team this year for Soul Words? Because 
She was very, very involved in the extremely successful Karen Hachomish campaign, which went to bonus rounds. And I gave to her. I was an early giver to that campaign. So I saw that. I yeah. saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also using the power of the Internet uh, to, to raise money. So you can't dance at uh, two weddings. So uh, yes, and even though I feel exactly the same way as I did uh, last year and the year before, I think it's been I think it was three years in a row. Um, it was very hard for me not to do this for you, but I'm happy I'm able to be here now. And um, I hope that whatever we discuss gets everybody to give more. That's the bottom line. <laughs> very good. Okay. So what, this, are we, 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 what, is, what is our discussion tonight? We're talking about the Jewish internet. And I think uh, we're having you on because you've had a lot of success using the internet uh, through social media as well. A very successful podcast, which you co-host with uh, Edith Schottenstein, who's one of our matchers. And yes. so you're someone who's had a lot of success using technology. I think we, you know, we want to hear, we'll hear a little bit of your uh, perspective. Yeah, I, I have a love-hate relationship with, with technology. Um, be, I'm actually taking a little bit of a break in a certain way just on Instagram right now because I'm transitioning to a new career and I felt like it would be a good time to just take a rest period. And I've really been enjoying that because I actually have time for other things. But at the same time, I do know that I'm missing out on sharing certain things that could have an impact. But you, I think that modern technology, like, well, I do have a podcast too. And I know that when I share something there, um, it resonates because we get many messages that, and emails um, that it does. So I know that I have another, another platform. And yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able to use modern technology. At the same time, I want you to know I appreciate it even more because I was recently went to Australia. Um, it's actually my grandmother, Shleshim, it was today. She passed this away. And, and I saw yeah. I saw Ruby today at the aisle. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. I, I missed, I'm, I'm going to go tonight, but I wanted to go for my grandmother's uh, Shloshim. Um, I was very close with her and whoever knew my grandmother, it was, it, I'm, I'm sure you know, it was an honor to have known her and a privilege because she's the role model for everybody, um, for me, especially as her granddaughter. And flying to Australia, I couldn't believe I mean, I've done it for many, many years, and it didn't seem as long as it as it does as time goes on. And I thought about it, and I realized it's because everything happens in a second for me now. I'm able to share something; it it gets there in one second. Um, I send a WhatsApp, I whatever it is, do a podcast; it's out there. You've already got thousands of listeners. And going on the plane, that's the one thing that still takes 24 hours. And <laughs> It, I feel like I'm in the dark ages. <laughs> and then I realize how much the world has changed when I get on that plane and I'm flying for hours and hours over oceans. Yeah, we take it for granted that today you send out a WhatsApp and uh, it, it goes halfway across the world in uh, less than a second. But, yeah. but, by the, but going back to what you said that you're taking a break from social media, I just want to comment about that. You had, or you still have, it's still your account, a, a very successful account. And I just think that's something that a lot of people can learn from. The fact that you stepped away from it because it wasn't useful to you at this time, and you may go back to it when it is useful. I think that's an important thing for us to, to keep in mind, that um, sometimes the success of it can become very uh, enticing. You get that, yes. you know, that dopamine hit every time. Yeah, you, you yeah. can become addicted. Yeah. And um, I think that sometimes it is good to pause a little bit and then come back to it. And also think about what your intentions are with social media, because sometimes you can get caught up and you can be influenced. You're an influencer, but you can also be influenced by what other people are doing. And it's a good thing to pause and reflect and think about, okay, what is my intention when I post something? Like you said, I heard you saying before, your intention is to do cool stuff with Torah. Yes, that, that is then, my intention, to do cool stuff with Torah. That is right. Yes. And actually, I just want to tell you, right before I did this Zoom, I went out with a friend. I've always told her about you and that I've been inspired by you and you re-inspired me in, in learning Hasidus and um, Torah and Hasidus. And I always told her about it. And then somehow I posted something that you that you, um, that you you had given over to me and I shared it. And that inspired her to start listening to your classes. And she's been listening to your Shabbat classes, to your Hasidus classes. 
Where, and she hasn't been listening to anything. You're the only person she listens to. But it was because of a social media post. Oh, and so oh you started her. You got her hooked with a social media post. Yes, I a was telling one. her about it. But that didn't, uh-huh. it wasn't doing as much as when I shared some message that mm-hmm. she read. And that just got her to go and listen uh-huh. to that particular session that you gave. And that just led her to listen to... She's listened twice to all your Shara Bittachan classes. You meant to listen to it three times. So now she's going through it the third time. <laughs> yeah. All your Tanya classes. Um, oh, wow. And, yes. So I'm you're just, saying she went from a little 30-second clip to going yes. through the whole Shara Bittachan, the whole Tanya. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Amazing. So that's what social media can do. Wow. But it also, like you say, can be very damaging. And I think that that's like tanya i mean we have the good and we, but what this one thing can have good and bad and it's really about right the clip that's right yes. the, the clip of the, the neutral uh mundane energy that could be elevated or or yeah, not it could be elevated or it could be used for the negative yeah and it's yeah. very powerfully used for the negative and very powerfully used for the positive you are somebody that's using it solely for the positive and that's a reason that everybody should donate tonight because here's the pitch yeah What's the pitch? You tell me. No, no, no. Say it. Go, you're, you're doing it. You're doing yeah. good. You're doing good. My, my pitch is, and I really do believe that, I think there needs to be more people like you who are just solely sharing sharing the depth of spirituality and the depth of Hasidus um, and things that can inspire us to change and grow. Um, yeah, that's solely, that's really just what you're doing. And that's what social media I think that is, I feel that that is what the Rebbe intended social media to do. Like, that's what he would want from it. Yeah, yeah. The, the Rebbe was an early adapter, uh, adopter of many uh, technologies. And, of course, the advent of the real uh, social media and Internet taking off was, was after Gimel Tamas. So we don't have the Rebbe's direct guidance about it. But the Rebbe's whole approach was always to use these, uh, use these tools to, to spread this. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's important because sometimes we get so caught up with it, we forget that human interaction, the human touch is is so important. And sometimes we just lose sight of that because we get so caught up in our messages and sharing through Zoom. But human interaction is something that is very valuable. Yeah, you got to get out once in a while. <laughs> you yeah, no, so leave your house important. once in a while. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's yeah. important for you to give live lectures as oh. well. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Okay. So yes, yes. A hundred percent. In addition to all the virtual stuff. Yes. Yeah. We need to do uh live. But I must say, lectures, like yes. I can wake up really early in the morning before you've given all your classes and listen to something. Of yours I think you that told me that you, alive. you and Ida did a podcast episode about the 5 a.m. club. Yes, we did. And I think like you mentioned listening to some of my classes at 5 a.m. Yes, we, we so can I tell you something? That is something that only technology could make possible because the right. only way you would ever hear me speaking at 5 a.m. is if I had been <laughs> up all night. But so I'm glad that you're able to do the 5 a.m. Well, yeah, we interviewed yeah, you yeah. at 5 a.m. I was up all night. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that was, I remember that. Yes, I remember that. Because I, I, I remember setting the alarm that I had a podcast interview with you guys at 5 a.m. And uh, yeah, by the time I finished Rambam at 3.30 and then... Uh, Wow. Yeah. Okay. That I couldn't do. So yeah. could us to you. Well, I, I get up a few minutes before Seis from Krishna. So, you know, you can't burn the candle at both ends. At any right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, yes, it's I, I think that um if we're gonna if we're discussing discussing show, social media here, I'm glad that I'm talking to you about it because you are somebody that I would go to, I would never unfollow. Um, even though you sent an email that we can unsubscribe, but I wasn't unsubscribing, but I would never, I would never unfollow you because you're every time you're consistent in sharing a post that's going to give a message to me where I feel inspired to take some positive action towards bringing light to the world. So <sighs> thank you. Okay. They're telling me we have to go to the next segment. Okay. okay. They're rushing me along. Okay. Mrs. Right. Krinsky, thank you so, 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 so much. Of- Everybody. Yeah. Hey, give away. It can only do good and bring light to the world. Thank you. True. Speaking of that email, you you encouraged people that if uh, the heads up that you were going to start, you know, soliciting and letting them know about the campaign and, yes. you know, inviting them to unsubscribe if that would be I wrote, overwhelming. I sent an email with the subject line, please unsubscribe. But it wasn't clickbait. It was, it was sincere. And it said, I'm about to go into a campaign 
There are going to be a lot of emails. If that's going to bother you, please unsubscribe. Right. So the the balance of being able to advocate for what is good and uh, to do that proudly and yet at the same time with the subtlety of giving space. From, you're talking about balance there before and utilizing something. But, um, you know, chat GBT, I've been having some fun. I only started it the other day because of... Uh, I remember well, uh, while I was talking to Yankee Raskin on night number two, you were playing with chat GPT. And I only gave a little glimpse into some of the stuff that went down in that 10 minutes. And then today... Uh, you know, I had a bunch of work to do, so then I ended up on Chat GPT for another forty-five minutes, mm-hmm. and there was some. Anyway, at one point on Monday, uh, Tuesday, when I was chatting, I asked, uh, "How does Rabbi Taub support his work that he does on Soul Words?" Really? Yeah, and it started off similar to the other stuff, very confidently, like writing straight to He's the point. Very confident. Yeah. And then he throws in, and he has a Patreon uh, page. And I'm I like, do not have a Patreon page. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> so that was one of those examples where, like, again, the, the give and take yeah, of, yeah. of it's technology. Just a bluffer, total bluffer. <laughs> total. Chat GPT is the biggest bluffer. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we're going to get to that. Uh, but I recall a conversation we had about three years ago. It was in the lobby of, uh, I forget the name of the hotel, in, in, in Scottsdale uh, on uh, Sukkis, Cholomite Sukkis. At the Shana Phoenician. Rabba. At the Phoenician, Phoenician, yeah. Phoenician, not Venetian? No, Phoenician. Like Phoenician. Phoenix. Um, David wants to get the money, so wrap up the Phoenician story. So I said, I said you, you, you were doing, there was a, during or into COVID, and you were doing a lot of virtual content, and there wasn't really any income coming from the uh, live speaking bookings. Uh, yeah, speaking. it all dried up. And I said, you know, it's, especially over the last couple of years, Patreon and similar you platforms. said Patreon? I mentioned, I said, yeah. I said, why not, you know, people enjoy your content, they're happy right. to... And you're like, no, I can't do that. I'm not comfortable with that sort of thing. If I'm doing something, I give it. It's there. Yeah. I'm not going to enter that whole world. But now we're raising five hundred thousand dollars. So you're right. So, but so you do it once a year, and it's an invitation. <laughs> we do it once a year, right? And if you don't want it, you could unsubscribe. That's the difference. You, right. you ba- but the point you made is that you didn't want to make it so that someone would have to pay. And to the get content something. is not behind a paywall. Exactly. So if you unsubscribed and you didn't give anything to this campaign, you could still go to soulwords.org and watch all my content for free. That's true. Exactly. And I hope you do. And and those who are able. But I really hope you give also. And even if it's a small amount, uh, to send that message of appreciation. Oh, can I talk about small amounts? Uh-huh. I have a, a very close friend who's a donor, and I'm not going to say more information, but he told me it would be very important to him that we should hit a thousand givers. Do you know how many givers we're up to right now? Oh, one second. I'll uh, we'll race you to it. We're both advertising Apple over here with their MacBooks on the on the table. Um, I, I don't. I can't see that. You would have to keep. Pressing C more in order to see that? I'll get it. Oh, you Good. have it the finish back end. Your, your, okay. you finish your Phoenician story, or do you want to get to money? The point is, you didn't want to make it contingent. So when somebody donates a significant amount, they are in, in essentially enabling those who are We have are 847 donors so far. So we need Very another 153. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But if you could make it even faster... Um, we need to You're break a thousand dollars. Oh, so Thank you. what I'm saying another is, another donation from another give brother-in-law a of mine. Give I a dollar. So far, your brothers-in-law have really shown up. Yes, Yisrael Gerlitsky, two hundred dollars, and my other brother-in-law. Some of them give anonymously, but, so please don't do not out them. Okay. Um, don't take these the the mitzvah of the. Uh, okay, the um, I wanted to read a few dedications and donations that just came in. You know, also these teams. I want to call out a few. Your Soul Words email list has raised 40300 40, The one so, that I told people to unsubscribe yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. So, so much for that. The parenting alumni team has raised almost 200% of their goal, 37934 Parenting alumni is such an incredible group. Um, Levi Shemtov from Friendship Circle of Michigan, who... The Friendship Circle of Michigan gave a gift of what was it? Was it five thousand dollars effective? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Levi Shemtov is the one who got me into parenting. I spoke about that when we did the parenting segment the other night. But I just want to say something. The genius of Levi Shemtov is that parenting proved to be an incredible springboard to teaching all types of stuff. In other words, a lot of these people 
from this very active and devoted uh, group, and you see from what, what they gave, and the Kahans from uh, Williamsburg who gave last night effective $24,000 are part of the parenting group. Um, they started with the parenting group, and from there, parenting becomes like the gateway to get into all the other stuff. So I see parenting's a... And by the way, people have been nudging me for a year now to do a marriage course and I've been scared to do it and I have very specific reasons why I'm scared to do it but I'm not going to talk about it right now but I'm almost ready to come over I'm almost ready to overcome the fear and to launch a marriage course but you have effectively done it under the guise of a mimer but I'll some brilliant marriage. with mikvah.org we did a yeah. we did a two part series on the L'chadedi mimer and uh, after the campaign I'm doing part 3 Oh, well, wow. And if yeah. that's not marriage advice, I don't know what is. Struli Bleichfeld uh, took a team. That he's at 216% yeah. of his goal. Bleichfeld. And I, oh, what did I say? Oh, Bleichfeld. Yeah. And I saw a bunch of donations of people who donated in his yeah. uh, honor. Uh, so clearly a, a special individual who is well-loved. Um, and Sharabi Tuchin fans are at $4,762. Your WhatsApp Broadcast list is at 122% of their uh, goal, $24,500. The goal was 20000 They went over. They went surpassed. to 24000 So yeah. uh, thank uh, thank, f- thank you for all these teams and continue. Um, and here, Shifra Sh- Sh- Rabisky just, just donated. donated. See, we're, we're very um, fortunate. With three, last night, 321Motion donated, and then now Shifra donated. So it's great. All the people we pay, they end up paying us back. Rifki Robinson, I think it's another Five Towns name. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah, yes. I think so. She gives um, to the Tanya group. She gave to the t- She comes to the Monday Tanya this year. That's great. You know, the- you know whose house we did that uh, joke thing that you ruined? Remember I gave a class on Jewish jokes? You didn't really ruin it. You, you, ru- you made it better for me and worse for everybody else. She had a great spin on it. She turned it into- It was at her joke, house. Uh, Jeopardy. So we had to joke Jeopardy. I did a class called "Every Truth Has a Little Joke" about Jewish humor, and I was telling Jewish jokes, and Chaim would would, would scream out the, the punchline as quickly as possible, which is a game that Chaim and I play. But people didn't know that, so they should, just thought I would. It's one of the it. worst things in the world to do. That I would. The only person I would ever do it was you, but specifically I did I like it. it. I, but annou- everyone else hates it. I announced the punchline of the joke before you started the joke. Once you <gasps> mentioned the theme, I even get hinted to, to the theme so and I, you jumped I, in with the punchline. I knew the joke that, yeah. Anyway, we have a very you special guest. You know who's good at guessing, um, not jokes, but he's good at guessing songs? You just say a theme and he knows the song. Uh, Ali Marcus. Marcus, <laughs> take it away. You got to give him a theme. There's been a number of themes. We have a few themes tonight. Suicide, Mashiach. No, that video didn't play. Uh, spoiler t- alert, he does it. But they told me the video is actually ready to play now, but um, we're not probably going to go back to it. Mashiach, yeah. give us something. Songs about Mashiach. There's a lot of songs about Mashiach. <laughs> I have a, one other big announcement. And while you warm up, while you warm key, up those keys, those keys. Yes. Yesterday, you read a beautiful letter from the Rebbe to a boy, Asaf, who wanted a trumpet. Who wanted a trumpet, and you can go watch it later. Uh, but if you haven't yet, the the Rebbe was uh, expanding his horizons a bit into uh, bigger things. To he was trying to get the little boy to expand his horizons. Yeah. Think and at the same time, uh, to not in any way to mistake that the Rebbe in any way was discouraging. Right. And to the contrary, could you speak a little bit to the, the about how much the Rebbe encouraged people to, it's the same thing we're talking about, utilizing uh, not just technology, but our individual talents and abilities. Um, and specifically as it relates to children. And really? This, yeah. This is what you want to talk about? I do, but I'm 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 raising that. You have I a have reason something for this? here. I'm surprised that that's what you want to talk about. I was like, David, could you? Are we stalling for Ellie? Is I'm Ellie... not. No, I want no, to do this is anyway. Ellie ready? Ellie, you got something ready? Yeah. Because I have. Because we're the Chaim's making stuff up about I'm not, encouraging I'm not, children I... to use their talents I... while we're 
we're waiting for you to do a Mashiach oh, song. Oh, those Beautiful two pieces, if you could bring them over. The bigger one first, actually. Okay. So I took this before I left the house. I'm supposed to take this? No, I want... No, I'll, no bring it around. Bring it around, David. Okay. Come on, David. We're going to get you on camera. Easy, easy. That's expensive. Very expensive. These are expensive, David. You're breaking it. No, he's... Do you, have you heard of uh, Michal Schwartz? Sure. Who was he? Chaim, he, tell us about okay. Michal Schwartz. <laughs> he was uh, an artist that was commissioned by both the Friedrich Rebbe and the Rebbe to do a number of different projects. And specifically, um, the Rebbe commissioned him to create artwork for different projects. Uh, uh, Publications for Jewish children, including Talks and Tales, I, th- I think a number of Tzivus Hashem publications. And the Rebbe really enjoyed his work and corresponded and talked to him a lot about his work and I believe uh, funded some things and they had a very unique relationship. And I brought this, it's a signed... Signed lithograph. Yeah, signed lith- He did c- primarily callig- calligraphy work. Which camera? Just say the number of camera, guys. This is such, you know, like, okay. you guys whispering up. and stuff, but it's so awkward because everyone's is, like, he's this trying is a to sign. stall while he's trying to figure out which camera to show. This you. is signed. Do you know which camera you're showing to yet? Number one, I got it. Is it one? You is see it? Because right? we don't see it. Okay, good. It's eight of 80. There's only 80 of these. There's only 80 of these in the whole world, and that's number eight. And it's uh, Yerushalayim calligraphy. It's a beautiful piece. And um, to anyone who donates, effective twenty thousand, effective twenty thousand, ten thousand dollars or more, we'll get that. Piece. The first, ne- the next donation to come in at ten thousand or more will. Uh, sorry, effective twenty thousand. Effective means- twenty thousand. So someone who does a ten thousand dollar donation, they get that. That's right. That's huge. Yeah. And I have a little something else. Can we just do this now and then throughout? Yeah, do, the yeah, night? do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baruch Nashen, could you tell you know about him? Sure, yeah, from Chevron. He recently passed. Both of these special individuals have both passed, so yeah. the value of these are significantly more. Okay. Did I like pressure you into making that a giveaway item, or you, that you had that in mind? I I had it in mind an hour or so before I left the house. I decided okay. to okay. do that. Okay, that's amazing. Because Bizbazaitis, we're doing this, and not that I, people are donating because they care, but it it doesn't hurt. In fact. When we spoke a little bit about money, um, when there, there's a gallery on Kingston Avenue, I believe it's still there. It's, it's one of those art s- storefronts that people don't know, you know, together with like, I think there's a travel agency or two that's still, still is, uh, holding on. It, when they decided to open up, the Rebbe sent a check of $10,000 to start them off. I did not know that. Specifically for the intention to train youngsters uh, in artwork. Oh, so yeah. that's where you were going before about helping children to yeah. use their... And talents. Baruch Nachshin, the Rebbe, got a space for him to exhibit next door to Nachshin 770. Nachshin did an exhibit, yeah, next to 770, and the Rebbe came to it. And not only that, the Rebbe, not only did the Rebbe come to it, but the Rebbe made sure that the display would be exactly in the best way. And then, By the way, I just got anonymous, effective 200, in honor of the greatest host, Chaim Kohn, and even spelled Kohn with a K correctly, uh. start a new podcast together. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Okay, I'll look up in the back end who that anonymous is. Thank you. The um, Oh, and after the exhibit, the Rebbe said, did you get any significant purchases? And he said in Hebrew, uh, basically saying that I guess I, um, my pricing was a bit out of... Oh, that's very sweet. Um, thank you. I guess it was uh, a bit beyond what people could afford. And the Rebbe said, no, the right person will be able to pay for it. And wow. they will appreciate that it's not uh, the value of it is the beauty and the meaning that it will bring into their home and wow. anyone who visits their home. Wow. And with that encouragement, he, he went back and he did sell a lot of his work. It's amazing. Wow. And, um, so I think it's significant. The, the Rebbe was not into undermining the value of things and appreciating. Um, the, anyway, so I, what I have here. It's an original Nachshin? Yes. The lithograph is original. It's a, it's a, a signed lithograph. So they, they have the original. This is 146 of only 225 uh-huh. okay. that were made. Signed, Nachshin. 146 out of how many? 225. 225. That's a five, right? So, but it's signed. It's signed. Yeah, lithograph. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. an option. And you can look him up. He's very famous, and this is I really respect. He was physically incapable of smiling. You'll never find a picture of him. Apparently, he never smiled. Got to respect that. Um, and this is, well, it's a beautiful depiction of Jerusalem. And, well, you could Google more about him. But an effective donation of $30,000. Oh, that's, that's big. Okay, so, so $15,000. $15, and again, we'll it's not for everyone, but like the rabbi told Baruch Nachshon, the, the right who's person. Ready, the right person, yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the Michel Schwartz is an effective donation of 20000 The Baruch Nachshon is an effective donation of 30000 Am I correct? Is mm-hmm. that what you said? Wow. Very generous. And uh, wow. That's very meaningful. At that was a point, cool surprise. Yeah. I think last year, like, surprising with a Pez dispenser. So this is definitely an upgrade. No, I did some other things. But yeah. we had the Chayach records. Could you tell us about this Pez dispenser? Yeah. It's been together. Well, it's been here the whole time. But it has a little yarmulke on it. My daughter's... Put a, they made a little yarmulke for my Pez dispenser. Uh, a lot of Pez dispensers are behemoths, uh, Timaeus on impure animals, so we, we don't get those. And a lot of them are like uh, cartoon characters, and we're not into that stuff. So, Which uh, one of your daughters? Can you say? You know what? I think it was more like a team project. That's adorable. Yeah. The Speaking of um, encouraging... And, uh, talent and artistic talent and children. Yes, uh, I have your personal WhatsApp and your profile picture. Don't give out the number. No, 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 no. Okay. Could you get a close up on this? I doubt they'll be able to get close enough on it. Nah. We could try. It's my. Uh, it doesn't do justice. You have to see it. You have close to see up. it. But yeah. it's a an adorable cartoon depiction of Rabbi Taub made by one of your daughters, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, my WhatsApp picture is a picture that one of my daughters drew of me and the right people you mentioned the right people that ever told Baruch Nachshon the right people the right people all understand that some people are like what's that weird picture I didn't even know it was you but the right people always say ah that's a perfect picture of you because the way that my uh, child sees me is the real me ladies and gentlemen Ellie Marcus Ellie Marcus song about Mashiach. It's also a song about Hasidus. And it comes from Jerusalem. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ere da ya ma ya ya ahaya ahaya ya hey mosai kosima le reshe ya futsu mena sakha futsu ahaya ma ya ya oye hey mosai kosima All right. We do another one. 
Yeah, of course. I have a song about Mashiach. Yeah. How much time do we have? This is a long song. As much time as you need. All right. Ellie, if it's you, much time. As you need. I'm sure the viewers are very happy to hear. Yeah. Let somebody write, uh, somebody send in a dedication and uh, gets, give us some comments about Ellie. It's always a crowd favorite. Yeah. Yeah. If it, I, I'm Whoever, sorry to you know, like uh, bring attention to you, but trying to bring in money. So. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. I need my friends, family who are watching. Send in a big donation. Do a big mitzvah. For soul words. This is another song about Mashiach. Okay. It's finally a good key. Let's start here. I want to say a special thank you to Shemi Brad for loaning uh, this piano. Oh, here that's tonight. his piano. It's a nice donation. I know you have history with the Bruds. Maestro Shemi Brad. Yes. Zog Jerebenu. Voz Vetsain as Moshiach Vet Kumen. As Moshiach Vet Kumen. Vel mir machna suudenu. Voz vel mir trinken na yev dem suudenu. Vem yai. Amishumo Demiai in Amishumo Demiai in Amishumo Bellamir Trinken Oiv de Mesude Vos Bellamir Snoiv de Mesude New them show it up, mitten Leviosen. Them show it up, mitten Leviosen. Them show it up, Leviosen, velen me here, resten, ja, in a mishumar, velen me trinken. Oi, them so Wetten stoi de zangen na yudem suden yu Yimo voyishe Rabbeinu Yimo voyishe Rabbeinu Yimo voyishe Rabbeinu Wetten stoi de zogen Yain am shumar Vela mir trinken Shera ba lev yosan Vela mir esten Ahoy yudem suden Wenn <laughs> Let's go up another half step. And wer wird uns spielen, no you've them suiting you. Oh, I'm here, oh, I'm here, oh, I'm here, oh. Forgot Beautiful. Right. Thank you. Always. Thank you. If you like that song, send in a donation. Come on. <laughs> and uh, yeah. 
we were told that the videos work now. Okay, so yeah, they do work. Okay, so uh, we're gonna give it a second try to pull up the. Uh, I remember I mentioned that we've reached ten million people. Uh, like thirty percent of that were like these three videos, uh, but Baruch Hashem, these were very very uh, popular. So let's try again the Golden Gate Bridge video, which was my first one million view video that was on TikTok, and let's see if the sound is good. We'll we'll roll with it. A uh, forensic psychologist for the San Francisco Police Department, Jerome Motto, he did an interview in the New Yorker magazine. And he spoke about the fact that he used to do the forensic work when people would jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Unfortunately, it was very common. And he would have to prove there's no foul play. How did he do that? He was a psychologist, but the person had already jumped. You can't interview them exactly at that point. He would have to retrace their steps and prove that they were, God forbid, in a frame of mind where they wanted to take their own life. So basically, that was his job. He used to go and look at people's history and their background to see what happened right before they jumped. So he said he got so used to this. He saw so many hundreds of jumpers that he became numb to it. He said there was one story that shook him and he could never shake it loose. He said one night they found a jumper and they went they, they found ID, they went back to, the, to the, the, the apartment where the guy lived, they found an address, they walk into the house, they found a note on the dresser, he said, I've seen that a hundred times, a note on a dresser, nothing new. But then I read the note, and it completely shook me to my core. It said, I'm walking to the bridge now. If one person stops me on the way and says hello, I'm turning around and coming home. Do not underestimate the fact that you can be that person for somebody else. You can be the one who cares. You can be the one who reaches out to somebody else. To the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. So that, that was actually a very serious video, and I think that's why it... Uh resonated with so many people. I'm mean, obviously a very, very serious subject. Okay, but like I was mentioning before, not everything is so serious. So a little comic relief. We'll pull up the corny joke, which made a kiddish Hashem. And uh, we have three envelopes. Corny old joke. Yeah, which got like one. There's a CEO of a big company. And on his first day, he met his predecessor, the guy, the CEO who just got fired. And the outgoing CEO... Uh, says to him, says, good luck, you know, filling my uh, shoes over here. Listen, if you have a problem that you don't have an answer for, here are three envelopes. And if you can't solve a problem, you open one of these envelopes. He says, okay, fine, no problem. He takes the three envelopes, he puts them away, and he starts running the company. The new CEO starts running the company. And he's doing okay for uh, a few weeks. But after about a month, he uh, there's a sharp downturn in profits and... Uh, Shareholders are starting to get upset, so he doesn't know what to do. He opens the first envelope, and inside the first envelope, there's a note that says, blame your predecessor. So he calls a, uh, a meeting, and he says, you know, really, we inherited a very weak structure from my, from my predecessor, and it's really his fault, but we're rebounding. And he calms everyone down, things settle. A few quarters later, and uh, things are not picking up, and the heat is on again. So uh, he doesn't know what to do. He opens the second envelope. Opens the second envelope, he looks inside, it says, reorganize. Okay, reorganize. So he fires a bunch of people, he hires a bunch of new hires, he reorganizes. And everyone comes down, and things are good for a few more quarters. And uh, then finally, there's a downturn, he doesn't know what to do, he has no other ideas. What, what can he do? He's got no choice, he goes back to the envelopes, he's got one more envelope, he opens the third envelope. Opens up the third envelope, there's a note on it that says, Prepare three envelopes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's just a silly joke, but it had 1.1 million TikTok viewers. Couldn't be wrong. And uh, it just shows you the tool. And like Mrs. Krinsky earlier said that she has a friend who started from watching one little clip and then from the little social media clip came to study with me the entire Tanya, the entire Shire Batochen. So these, these clips are, uh, are a potent way, at least, to get the ball rolling. Uh, we have one more viral clip, and this did not break a million yet. 
Shifra posted this a couple weeks ago on Instagram. It's now at 943,000 views. Every time I check on it again, it has like another 10,000 views. So maybe it'll break a million tonight. But we're more interested in breaking the $500,000. <laughs> yeah, in case you want to know where my priorities are, uh, I'll be a lot more satisfied to break $500,000 tonight than to break a million um, views on this Instagram video. But at any rate, this is called Spiritual versus Religious, which has 943,000 views at present on Instagram. Do we have it? I don't know if this is something a rabbi should say, but uh, you know the difference between religion and spirituality? And this is not to negate religion. I, I, I happen to be a religious Jew. I believe in religion. I'm a, I'm a member of an organized religion. Well, Chabad, kind of organized. You know. <laughs> um, but there's a saying... <laughs> What's the difference between religion and spirituality? They say religion is for people who are afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for people who have been there. Okay. And by the way, just so everyone knows, for sake of transparency, I think I even said the words, there's an old saying. Um, Meaning to say, I didn't make this up. Sometimes I do coin a phrase and I uh, make up my own new lexicon, but that's an old saying. And I just want to share a little bit about that. Um, everything, remember last night when Mrs. Flickstein was on the, from, from Delaware and I told her about how to tell stories. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, you got to watch episode three. Um, and I was talking about how to use stories. You don't just tell stories because stories are fun to listen to. You got to tell a story because it perfectly illustrates the point you're trying to make. Uh, the same thing with aphorisms. And you know how to say aphorisms in Jewish. is Vertelach. Same thing with uh, quips and sayings. Uh, you don't just use them because they're fun to say. Sometimes they're just a really great way of making the point. So th- that's uh, an example. Uh, what's the difference between spirituality and religion? Uh, religion is for people afraid of going, hell, to going to hell. Spirituality is for people who have been there. I uh, I didn't make that up, but I filed it away. And when it made sense that that was the best way to make the point I was trying to make, so I pulled it out. And by the way, that it wasn't part of the clip. This is why I had to hire somebody to do social media. And God willing, with all this money that's come in, I'm going to hire a lot more people as well. But I would have ruined that clip because I would have not been able to hold back from including the next joke that I told. I know exactly which one I think it was a one hour, maybe it was even an hour and 15 minute lecture. I know which hour long or more, more than hour long lecture that that clip comes from. And I'm watching it. We're like, but why didn't you leave in the next joke? The next joke was, and it was related to the same theme and, and, or the next aphorism or joke or quip, I, I get, which I, I did not make up, but I quoted, I said, what are the directions for recovery? Go to hell and make a U-turn. Okay. But, and I would have left that in there because I felt that was like, you know, doubling down on the theme, but thank God I don't run my own social media. So I don't think it would have 943,000 views if I would have included the second joke. Okay, fine. So we made up that segment. Now we're going back to Mashiach. Okay. Cause we're in the second hour and our topic now. Oh, wow. Can I just do a little retrospective over here? By the way, Ellie Marcus, are you like you're on call? Like, if I refer to you, you're able to. I'm, I'm if, I, if my mic is live, I'm, okay, I'm here because I surprised you because you thought you had a break right now. Um, could you like? Do you have any like sentimental background music while I go like take a trip through memory oh, yeah, lane? Absolutely. Absolutely. Little, you do. Okay, amazing. What a professional. We did not prepare this. No. Wait, where are we going? A trip down memory lane. Oh, yeah. A little reminiscing. Okay, so, oh, I love this. So soothing, the soothing tones of Ellie Marcus. By the way, you're, you're renowned as a singer. A lot of people do not realize your talent, uh, not just with piano. I've seen you play guitar. Do you play any other instruments? Play drums. Drums? Yeah. And, and you play a brass, I heard. A woodwind? A recorder? A Can you play hot cross buns on a recorder, Ellie? <laughs> I can play a recorder. Yeah. Uh, it's not that difficult. Okay. Uh, I played flute for a couple of years. The flute? Year, 
years, once or two, one or two years. So you're really uh, talented. I a, uh, a, what is it called? A, a, gui- a, a guira? I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. A didgeridoo? No, no. It's what that, you know, that stick thing that, you know, that happens. Like, Can you play a juice harp? And is juice harp an offensive term? I'm not familiar. You don't know what that is? No. It's a piece of metal, and you put it in your jaw, and you bang on it, like, it goes. <laughs> it's a vibrating piece of metal. And it's actually called a juice harp, but everyone pronounces it juice harp. And I think the Wikipedia article there says it's com- acceptable to call it a juice harp as well as a juice harp. Yeah. Okay, this I'm is some it. sentimental music. Okay, fine. So let's take a trip over the past four days. Four days with Chase. Okay. I don't know who came up with that title. It wasn't me. Our first night, we had our topic Monday night at 8 p.m. I think our first topic was, if I'm correct, David, you're going to call me out because you remember all the topics, I'm sure. Um. David remembers at what time each technical difficulty happened over the past week. He might not remember the topics, though, but let's see if he'll remember. Okay. Monday at 8, we spoke about Shara Betochen, trust. And then at 9, the second class on Monday, every night had two classes, we spoke about Tanya. That's what David said Tanya correctly. We spoke about Tanya. And uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, but there was a commonality between those two topics because they're both books that deeply affected my life Shara Betochen and Tanya okay Tuesday first topic was being the parents that our children deserve right was that right yeah and then the second topic was I'm not a psychologist those are connected you know why because they're both areas that Torah has a lot to say in and yet people assume that it doesn't and they taken a lot of uh, secular uh, guidance regarding those subjects and I love explaining to people what Toyota has to teach us about good healthy parenting and about emotional well-being and that's why those two are connected okay then Wednesday our first topic on Wednesday was that was last night I should remember it best of all you know you know that I'm getting old because my long-term memory is better than my short-term memory I can remember Monday better than I can remember Wednesday is that, is that really what happens? Okay. Um, last night. What was the first topic last night? What? Q&A, ask me anything. That's right. We had... Oh, can I make an announcement? So there were a bunch of great questions that were printed out on a card, and I didn't answer them, and then somebody emailed me today um, and said... Oh, you didn't answer my question last night. I forgive you, but I, I really want you to answer it. And I emailed this person while I was at the oil. I was at the oil all day. And uh, I think it was a girl. Was for, some, for some reason, I'm thinking that. She said, I'm, I'm, I go to a Litvisher school in Yudushalayim. That's what, and, uh, that's what she said. I think it was a girl. And I said, a young woman. And I said to her, you know what? Your question was great. I had it printed on a card. I wanted to do it. I didn't get to it. I, I have those questions. David, save the questions. Lee Nether, after the campaign's over, one of the things we want to start, because we got it, like Ellie Nash said on night number one, when you make money, you got to spend it. You got to show that you're doing more. So I think we're going to start a regular Q&A, like a weekly. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do like weekly Ask Me Anything. David, we'll let you know. We'll fly you in from Florida. Maybe we'll come down to you in Florida. Okay. Ah, oh, he says, please. All right. And then the second class last night was the Rebbe's Treasure, the Igris, the Rebbe's Letters. And I think we even overtly spelled out what the connection between those two topics were, that my uh, approach to answering questions was plagiarized directly, like chat GPT, um, from the Rebbe's Egress, the Rebbe's way of answering people's questions. And that's what the connection there. Now, tonight, topic number one was the Jewish internet. And we spoke about social media. We spoke about wielding the internet as a powerful tool and how it allows us to reach people all over the world in an unprecedented manner like never before in history. Now, that brings us to Mashiach. Because, like Ellie, when you were singing earlier that first song, right? Mashiach went up to heaven. He asked the soul of Mashiach, when are you going to come, my master? And he said, when your teachings, the teachings of Chassidus are spread throughout the world. So the, the use of the tool of the internet to disseminate the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, namely Chassidus, 
that brings about the advent of a perfect world, which we refer to as Mashiach. And this brings us to our final topic of the week, which is not only the ultimate culminating topic of our four days with Chase, but it is the ultimate culminating purpose of all of creation. And here we are. Okay, enough reminiscing. Okay, now we gotta, yeah, we arrived. We're in the present now. Now give me music. Oh, that like little flourish at the end. Did do. That's so good. You're See, here. A little professional touch. We are here. Now, yeah. Can you give me like some music to like feel in the present moment now? Because now I want to talk about where we are now. Yeah. You're so good. Is this called jamming? Is this jamming? It's a kind of yeah, jamming. Is, uh... Does it have to be jazz to be jamming? No. Jazz is improvisation, so... But this is a form of improvisation? Are we improvising? Yes, very much. This is so exciting, Ali. This is happening now. This is, this now. is happening right now with a 10-second delay. Amazing. So this is, we're in the present moment, and Mashiach is coming any moment. We can feel it. We can see it. There are signs everywhere. I like how you're following my tone. It's so good. Could you follow me around all day long? <laughs> Could we just make life one big kumzitz? Wouldn't that be amazing? When Mashiach comes, life's going to be one big kumzitz. Life needs a soundtrack. <laughs> Did you make that up? Is that yeah. a quote? But you used it perfectly, like I was talking about before, pulling out an aphorism in the perfect context. That was good. Oh, you see, Ellie isn't just uh, a, a talented musician. He also is good with the banter. And he's a good guy. He's a good person. Ah, uh, shucks. You know where I saw Ellie last? Walking down Kingston Avenue. He was coming back from a gig. Is it okay if I say this? He was coming back from a gig. Where You did a wedding last night. Where? Uh, in Flatbush. In Flatbush. And that's good because sometimes you like have to drive really far. That's like right. Lakewood. It's yeah, an Lakewood. hour and a half on the Garden State Parkway. It's on murder. Home, it's an hour and a half. Yeah, on the way home. You're going there. And by the way, coming from five towns, I was in... Lakewood for Yotes Kislev. Took me four hours to get there. Oh, I want to mention something serious for a second, actually. And I'm going to try not to get an emotional. I'm trying, going to try not to get emotional, but um, for one, one second. Um, Yotes Kislev, I was in Lakewood, uh, which is a great honor that the Lakewood Kihila asked me to fabreng Yotes Kislev. It's actually astounding. That itself is a sign of Mashiach. The night that I, I was fabreng in, in Lakewood was the night that Henya Fetterman, Allah Shalom, arrived to the hospital in Lakewood where um, she remained for, for several weeks uh, in intensive care. And of course, we know that she passed away uh, last week. And we want to wish her family a, um, the, the comfort that only. Hashem, who is the omnipresent, who fills all spaces, that only the infinite one can can grant. And ultimately, we we wish them and all those who are mourning the loss the loss of a loved one uh, that not only should they be comforted, but they should be reunited with their loved ones. Mashiach should be here. There should be Tchias Amesim, and everyone should be back. And that's that's that. Okay. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Mashiach. This is the. Hold on, I'm getting, yeah. Okay, I just got a nice uh, text here. I'll deal with it in a second, but a very nice donation. And my son-in-law, Moishi, just told me we're about to get, we're about to hit 900 donors. Just want to check on that. We're at 896 donors. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep it going. Okay, so. Talking about Mashiach. Are you able to keep up with me? You really, yeah, you're comfortable doing this? Sure, sure. Okay, fine. So I guess we'll start like this. In the beginning of the heavens and the earth, there was uh, chaos and void and darkness upon the depths. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. You know where this is from? Uh, second verse of Genesis. Well, I started from in the beginning. I did start. Through, yeah, I, I did. I got to the second verse. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. 
and then the third, the third verse is, and God spoke and said, let there be light, and there was light. But, yeah. Oh, you're very, so you, uh, Ellie, you're too good. So you also knew. Bible scholar. You're also a Bible scholar, a musical scholar, a Bible scholar. So you said second verse because you knew that I was going to speak about Ruach Halakim on a You are so good. Yes, that is the second verse of Genesis. And um, as the commentaries tell us, that this is Ruach Hashem Melech HaMashiach, that the spirit of Mashiach was present at the very beginning of creation, which tells us that the entire purpose of creation was Mashiach. So here's the deal, boys and girls, uh, we all have problems. Oh, don't I know it. We all have problems. But here's the thing. You know, we, we spoke about the other night about Michael Caine used the difficulty. Did you hear that story? I'll tell it to you. It's a good one. You can use it in your repertoire. Um, I think uh, the first or second night I told this story. Michael Caine, it was the first night actually when I sang uh, the Burt Bacharach song. Michael Caine, the renowned uh, British actor, he was in a uh, dress rehearsal for a play, and he was supposed to enter the stage from uh, through a door. The set had a door, and the two actors on stage before him, who were on stage at that time, were playing a husband and wife who were fighting. And one of the actors threw a chair, and the chair slid up against the door. And Michael Caine was supposed to make his entrance, and he went to open the door and it stuck because the door was blocking the the chair was blocking the door. It was a dress rehearsal. There wasn't an audience there, but dress rehearsal. You know, you're you're in showbiz. Dress rehearsal. You're supposed to pretend it's completely like there's an audience there. So the director finally said, "It's your cue. Get on stage." And he said, "I can't. There's a chair blocking the door." And the director said, "Use the difficulty." He said, what? Use the difficulty. He said, what does that mean, use the difficulty? He said, the chair is your difficulty? An actor uses the difficulty. If it's a comedy, come in and fall over the chair. If it's a drama, smash the chair. But use the difficulty. Mm. Yeah. So here's the deal. We all have challenges. We all have problems. But ultimately, everything that exists in our lives if it's a difficulty, we have to use the difficulty. If Hashem wanted simple, he could have left things simple. He didn't have to create. <laughs> that would have been the simplest of all. But he created a world, a physical world, where creation masks creator, where beings seem to be independent entities, even though we know that's absurd, it's preposterous, cannot even be. And, uh, not only that, but to compound it all, to aggravate it all, he puts us into these containers called bodies that relate primarily to our physical surroundings to the point where our senses drown out the voice of the soul. We don't even remember the spiritual truths that were so clear to us. But then he gives us what we call an animal soul, some call it an evil inclination, and its whole job is to distract us and to give us fake news and to tell us to buy into the Alma de Shikra, into the deception that the world is independent. And uh, it makes us do things that don't even make sense. It makes us do things that we think will make us happy and they don't even make us happy. And we spend our whole lives being confused this way. What's it all for? We could have just stayed in heaven. And yet, what did Hashem want? Hashem wanted the ultimate paradox. He wanted the paradox of the infinite revealed within the finite and of perfection revealed within imperfection where ultimately we would refine this physical plane to the extent where the world, the earth, would become holier than heaven. And at that time, like the prophet says, all flesh will see together, not just it'll be a perception that we'll be able to cognitively wrap our minds around, but we will empirically perceive. Our senses, our bodies will be in tune with this truth. And everything will finally make sense. And that's the story of existence. That's what we're all here for. Okay. 
So that's the what. What is happening? And it is happening. Make no mistake about it. It's happening and it's going to be, the job is going to be finished very, very soon. And I want to mention another thing. I, I, I said that Yudtes Kislev, I was in Lakewood. I just want to mention something. Um, there are many times throughout history where it seemed that Mashiach was really, really ready to come. Uh, one of those recent times was in the 90s. And of course, you know, Lubavitchers have a very specific recollection of that. But I, I try to remind people that the whole world was thinking. I'm saying even the non-Jewish world was thinking messianically in the 90s. Remember the fall of the Berlin Wall. Communism toppled without firing a shot. And and the whole world was changing. And of course, if you were attuned to the Rebbe those in those years in 1991 and 1992, it really, really felt like Mashiach was more of a possibility than 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 not and perhaps and of course who knows these things and I, I I'm not purporting to be uh, giving an explanation but I can just I can say something that is a fact uh, the, the level to which the Jewish world uh, was united in that time is incomparable to what it is today the the, the amount of Achtas Yisrael the unity that there is among Klal Yisrael today is like never before my entire existence is a testimony to that my, the fact that I'm able to teach Torah to so many different circles within Klal Yisrael and that they, they, they trust me to be respectful of them and that when I go to different communities I make sure to adjust my lingo just to, not to adjust my message my message is always my message but to adjust my lingo just a little bit and you know you instead of using a story about this godel use a story about another godel I was in Williamsburg the other the other Shabbos and I started with the story of the Divra Yoel you gotta you gotta speak the right language but at any rate the point is that today Klal Yisrael is united like never before. We have tools, we're speaking about the internet, that we never had before. There's so much that's in place that is ready to just make it happen. And it's so plausible, it's so likely. And, and that's the way that we should be feeling, that's the way that we, we should be thinking. It should be surprising to us that we're in Gullis this second. Why it should be more normal to us that Mashiach will be here this second. To the extent, I, I just want to share something with you. I was I was at the oil today, as I mentioned a few times, and um, I was standing in the back tent, fourth tent, and I saw somebody in the third tent. And you know how sometimes you see somebody, you don't see their face, but I don't know. Our brains work very quickly to like. Uh, categorize and, and classify we have a certain like taxonomy that we do on a, at a very at, at lightning speed a very rapid rate and sometimes you see somebody's silhouette and you just before your even your your word brain can produce the name of the person you spot it oh that's a familiar person so that happened to me today. I was in the fourth tent, and I saw somebody in the third tent. And before I could even think of his name, I was like, oh, I know who that is. I have to go over to him. And then when my word brain kicked in and was able to actually say names, I heard the name, and I was like, no, he passed away. And it's a friend of mine who passed away. So my next thought was, that it will happen very, very, very soon. That we're going to see people. It's a very realistic scenario. Maybe it'll even happen walking from the fourth tent to the third tent at the, at the, at the aisle. You're going to see your friend who you haven't seen since he passed away. And you're going to go, Yay! But you're going to actually be able to say it with shame and malchus, with a, a real bracha. You look good. You know what? You look even better than the last time that I saw you. Well, this is a this, and it's going to be the most normal thing. And and the infinite within the finite, and and the spiritual within the physical, and the perfect within the imperfect, and and all the whole paradox will have come to to fruition. And 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 and. God will be seen in this physical world like the angels in heaven cannot see him. And, and it's, that will be normal. And not only it will be normal, my friends, that is normal. And anything else is abnormal. 
And that's why we need to learn Chassidus. Yeah, I'm going to give away the secret. Everything I'm teaching, hopefully, is from Chassidus. And Chassidus is Teirah Sishel Mashiach. When you learn Chassidus, it becomes more and more normal to expect godliness to be revealed in your life and in the world. And therefore, Mashiach becomes more normal and it becomes an expectation. And that's, that's the way we need to program ourselves. Don't, don't allow f- foreign influences to, uh, to program your thinking, like we spoke about before, about using technology as a tool and not letting it use you. Be really, really selective of what forms your thinking. Anything you consume is forming your thinking. So if we want to make our reality a Mashiach reality, we have to learn Torah, and we have to consume Torah messages, especially Chassidus, which is a, a very special perspective within Torah, which makes the spiritual tangible and, 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 and real and relatable. And very, very, very soon, before we even hit 500,000 donors, we're going to hear the Mashiach is already here. And you could still keep giving. We're not going to stop the campaign after Mashiach. And of course, because then we're going to... Re- I don't know. Will we use money after Mashiach? I don't know. But whatever it is the money was supposed to do, we're going to... You, don't, you think we're going to stop when Mashiach comes? Oh, when Mashiach comes, we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Wow. That was so much better with the music. Thank you. I'm really impressed with your ability to do that completely off the cuff. And, and the bittle. Because normally, you know, most showbiz guys, they don't want to be the accompaniment. But this guy is a real chassid. So, shikai. Well, a call out a donation? Okay, where am I going to see the donation? Chaim has it? Oh, 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 Yes. Um, can Chaim talk while I look at this donation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, we're getting very close to our goal of 1,000 donors. I'm seeing them come in very, very fast. And we're at over 65% of our goal. So I, I, I feel very confident that we're uh, going to get there tonight. There's a lot of great music coming soon. Some other one. We have a, a surprise guest coming in a minute. You don't know about it yet. Oh, but cool. I wanted to read, we mentioned Yisrael Gordon earlier, and someone actually gave a, a beautiful donation dedicated to his memory. But I forgot to mention uh, that I wanted to dedicate that song earlier to a speedy and full recovery uh, to Rebbe Yisrael's wife, Ellen. Uh, so uh, it should be in merit for a speedy recovery for Elka Bas Bashka. Um, may she Amen. have a complete recovery. And... There are some beautiful donations that came in together with dedications. Reminder, by the way, about the two pieces of artwork from uh, Michael Schwartz and uh, Baruch Nachshin. For oh, right. uh, anyone I'm not who gives, be too long, but uh, right. twenty thousand for the Michael Schwartz, thirty thousand for the uh, Baruch Nachshin. Effective Nachshin. donation of, of that. I amount. have the donation, by the way. Can I call it out? Yeah. Okay. So I, I just got uh, word that Karen Achomish. Uh, which is foundation that the Rebbe started in memory of the Rebbe Tzinchai Mushka. And that was today. When I went to the oil, I always stopped by the Rebbe I actually told her about the campaign. And Karen Chomish is a very special foundation. They do a lot of, uh, uh, they're involved in a lot of projects, but it is an incredible honor that they support Soul Words. They also gave to last campaign, and specifically because of the work that Soul Words does with Torah study involving women. And that is definitely a great honor and something that I do not take lightly, um, the importance, the absolute importance of, of, of teaching Torah to, to women and to girls. And uh, this should be in honor of uh, the Rebbe Chaim Moshka. And the, the donation from Karen Achomash is $2,350 effective, though, that gets doubled, and that is going to be $4,700. Oh, <laughs> $4,700, I just realized. What's that? Multiples of four seventy. Beautiful. That's the whole Karen Achomish thing. Oh. Just clicked. Wow, beautiful. that's beautiful. Oh, we have our surprise guest that's going to be ready in a moment. I saw a donation came through today from... Huh? Yes, yeah, I'm just introducing him. Uh, I saw a donation that came through today. And I recognized the name because I saw a podcast uh, a few months ago with him, and I recognized his face. When I saw that, 
Um, uh, his name is Gedalia Miller. Oh wow! Do you, you right? I know. Of course, <laughs> I know Gedalia. He donated today. Exactly. And uh, that and and. But, but I thought crazy? of his name Gedalia's before that. Gedalia's doing a campaign right now, <laughs> Kesha Nafshi campaign. What kind of a crazy guy in the middle of his own campaign gives to somebody else? I didn't campaign? even know that. I didn't even know that. Anyway, uh, our guest is live, and Gedalia, thank you for coming. Do you hear us? Seems to be frozen. I met Gedalia uh, 13 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was a cold call salesman at the time, and he had an office in Borough Park on 14th <laughs> Avenue, and he was so gracious. Uh, you were trying he, to sell him something? I sold him something. Not only I sold him something, it came along with a surprise uh, five-year contract. Um, and I'm sorry if I ripped you off. You were very gracious. And at one point you said, as you were signing, I know I'm overpaying for this, but you're a nice guy. And you, you took the most expensive what I had to offer. And then you try to recruit me as a salesman for your insurance company. I, maybe I should have taken you up on that. I wouldn't have to be doing this. But... Um, Anyway, uh, you, you do great work, and I would love to hear more about it. And uh, is this audio good? Is you with us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, shalom aleichem! Wow, amazing. How are you? I actually went downstairs. We have a whole team upstairs of about forty people trying to make calls and trying to hit the numbers. We're still behind the huge amazing. amount of numbers. But I figured if if they ask me to do something for Klal Yisrael, then I know. Um, the last time when we wanted to come for Shabbos, you weren't available. You took a car specially out all the way to us to speak, and then turned right around and, and, and went back. I remember that, so yeah. I know how important that is for Claudius to have a person like you do the work that you do on behalf of, of the parents, on behalf of kids, on behalf of especially the parenting program that you have. So you may make a major impact, Claudius Yisrael. And I figured, even though we're behind, this is something that's important for Klal Yisrael, so we're going to do this. Amazing. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I don't think people realize how, when you're running a campaign, Klal is running the Kesha Nafshi campaign right now, when you're running a campaign, you don't have time for anything. It's completely all-consuming. To take time from your campaign to come on to my campaign uh, is uh, extremely impressive. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, um, you know what somebody told me? And I, I, I'm just going to share it with you the way somebody said it to me. No, they didn't prep me. By the way, you're a surprise guest. I, didn't know, I did not know that you were coming on. Um, somebody said to me last week about my parenting course. My parenting course is for, like, all parents. It's, it's, it's not crisis parenting. It's just regular parenting. Well, what halavai, what if only would become regular parenting. Somebody said to me last week, they said, you know what your parenting course is? It's to get people to do what they speak about at Kesha Nafshi 10 years earlier. <laughs> so I took that as a great compliment. Yes. Yeah. Now would be a good time for that. What do you care if these kids have parents or these orphans have parents? Should I tell that joke? Obviously, I started with the punchline. I love that joke. Yeah, you want to tell the joke? Now you want to hear a joke? You, you got nothing better to do. Just running a campaign. That's it, right? Okay, why not? Chaim, you want to tell the joke? You want me to do it? Can you do it well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I could do it. Go. Okay. Yeah. There's this guy, there's this Yushalmi, always has to be, uh, who uh, comes to Manhattan once a year and he collects money from this uh, gvir in this office in Manhattan uh, for an orphanage. And... Uh, for years, he's been giving to this orphanage. And uh, finally, this, this, this rich guy from Manhattan, he goes to Eretz Yisrael, he goes to Yerushalayim, and he wants to visit the orphanage. So he goes to the address of the orphanage, you know, that he always was told was the address. And he sees it's an apartment. And he listens, and there's like a family inside. And he knocks on the door. And this Yushalmi guy answers the door, and he sees little kids running around, and he realizes this is his family. This is where he lives. Like, he's been sending the guy money. He, this isn't an orphanage. This is this guy's house. This is to, to raise his, his own family. So he says, what? You're not doing, this is not for orphans. This is for your family. And the, 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 the Yashami guy says to him, what does it bother you if these orphans have parents? <laughs> so <laughs> what's the vort? That what does it bother you if these kids in pain 
get love so they don't actually have to become the kids in pain. If we do it preemptively before it has to get to that point. 100%. What I've had a phone call the last couple of uh, weeks since my interview came out. Um, the last couple of months we had a Yiddish interview on, on latest talks and now we did with the Beats of last week. Something went around and we're getting so many calls of the early stages of the kids going off the derech. And we realize we're doing Keshe Nash. You know, we started off with the about six years ago when we only had parents that had kids, we call them stage four. And now, Buk Hashem, um, you would come back at the chase for Shabbos. And it's probably won't be busy anymore with that many kids, parents with stage four. You'd be more busy with parents with mamish stage one and two. That last week they were still in school, and this week they're staying home. Mm. And it's so much, the unfortunate though, we're talking much younger kids, 12 year olds already, not going to school, 11 year olds. And they really just need parents to really, really only understand them and love them. And what you've been preaching all the time, that that's what's going to change the shift and how these kids are going to be raised from 12 and up. So I think how, how important um, your work that you do at Soul, Soul Words with getting parents to realize that by supporting your organization and by having that kind of new way of, of it's not new, it's a strong way of what you want. To tell People are afraid that, that it's new. I always tell them, this is not a new it's thing. It's Obviously, Israel is not new. <laughs> right. Last time I checked that uh, two or three hundred years ago, there were no classrooms with, with chairs and, and sitting there for 10 hours in the classroom. So not that it's not a good thing, it's just that we have to be able to adapt to the ones that don't fit into that form, but at least they should have parents. Yep, yep. Oh, sure. Dalia, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time, even though you're so busy with your own. That's on your campaign. Your, your campaign. You want to give the link? Yeah, you want to donate at our campaign. It's charity.com slash KN. KN for Kesher Navshi. Yes, and if they want to put it on my page, with a couple of minutes that I invested over here, it's uh, basically charity.com slash kn slash 7799. I'm going to do it Thank right you. now. Thank you. Good luck. Yes. Naslochen, have a gewaldi. Oh, Amen. Naslochen to you. you. Amazing. You. Wow. What a treat. That was a nice surprise. Mashiach Zeitin. Oh, the, the, we're going back to the old days. This uh, We had people from different parts of uh, Hanhala of Yeshiva's the crazy progressive things they're getting into, loving, accepting, affirming kids. It's wild, wild stuff. It's <laughs> like they read a Dr. Seuss book or, or, I don't know, a letter from Igris or something. <laughs> Where did they get this crazy love of children from? Uh, what's yeah. next? Um, but, <laughs> all right. Oh, Ellie Marcus. I had an, we, something we wanted to discuss when you have a chance. You know, you mentioned different communities and different kreisen that you're able to key into. Yeah. Um, but you know the universal language that, it, that all circles relate to? Suffering? <laughs> <laughs> In addition to suffering. By the way, we had a very successful second attempt at that suicide story. So Suicide story. Speaking of suffering. I know. You were upset that you wrote that joke an hour ago and you didn't get to say it. Thank God didn't land it hurts it, nobody in the studio liked it we liked it but we were offended by it and then you still had to say it on the mic but i'll still invite you back next year. <laughs> i think i'm gonna head to the uh, rope store on the way home from here <laughs> which coincidentally seems to always be just next door to the, no, if you're right. <laughs> the rickety stool store all right go, go, you had a, a vert what? You had a vert? A vert? We said, what is the uh, uh, common theme that you're able to... Oh, the common language? Yeah. Music. That's true. That's true. Speaking of music, speaking of various different horizons, today Ellie and I were fabricating about our shared love of Skulena Nagunim and Karlina Nagunim. Uh, not Karlina, that also, but Kalavin Nagunim. Not many people know that... And some... people often ask me about the Kalavir, because... The Kalavir is also Taub. That's right. Yes. There's a lot right. of Taubs yes. from Rebbe Shemesh Bachas. Mudgets is Taub, and Kalavir is also Taub. But no, no relation. And there's uh, so many beautiful stories and so many beautiful Nagunim. But since we were, were on a theme of Amunah and Bitachin, 
throughout this uh, campaign and could use some of it now. And I think we, uh, we don't even have to rely on a Muna. We're getting close. We have a parking spot. Who needs a Muna? <laughs> but this is a beautiful song. And I would love to sing it together with Ellie. from the low part is that what you say let's go boy you're tired of eating hey lick of eating hot them on there hot them on and boy they call a lot me Hot's the moon, hot the moon, and by the call I love him. Sweat I could sign, sweat I could sign. I don't know, oh, I fed him well. Oh, no, I fed him well. I tired of it. I hey like a yitten, I hot them on the hot them on them by the call I love him. Hot them on the hot them on them by the call I love him. Sweat I get it sign, sweat I boil sign. I'm to null them all. Oh, if there well, don't know if I yeah, no well. Do the little Hazanas part. Yeah. Oh, yeah, move on now, I'm on now. I'm on now. I'm on now. In a boy day, I love me. I eat not them on now. I'm on now. What's Yennevelt? Yennevelt is here. Mm. We don't have to die to have Yennevelt. What do you care if these kids have... What do you care if these orphans have... Parents, right? Uh, how about a few Skulenen Nagunim? Sorry? How about a few Skulenen Nagunim? Do you know where the Skulenen Rebbe lived when he first came to America? Crown and Brooklyn. Corner of Crown and Brooklyn. So many. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something that I learned recently. The only person that the Rebbe ever gave his Aliyah to, his Aliyah Latoira, was the Skalana Rebbe. The Rebbe used to, yeah, yeah. When it comes to 7 7, the Rebbe would give him his Aliyah. Oh, it's a beautiful story about how he came and the Rebbe's involvement with him coming here. And, uh, oh, choose one, anyone. Did you uh, listen Did to that? segue into two different songs? There's a story, my father sent me a clip of a rabbi telling this story. The Rimnitzer Rebbe, who apparently lived in Seagate at one point, uh, had the Skulena Rebbe over, uh, and they were talking, and the Rimnitzer kept sort of hinting for the Skulena Rebbe to share a taira, a vart, uh, something. 
and he was silent and then he pushed him again he's like listen I'll sing a niggin and so he sang a very famous uh Skolena niggin which was ah if you could give us a few bars while I tell the story and um he sang the niggin and the remnants of herders, I say, yeah, Shane and Nigan, nice Nigan. But uh Abyssal Tire Apis. And he's like, I just gave it to you. Um and uh he says, Yeah, come on, that's it's nice, a niggin. So he's like, Okay, fine, I guess you didn't understand it. So he sang it again. <laughs> so he's like I'm not getting it. It's a nice niggin, but and he's like, this is what you do. You compose. This is how you spend your time, don't you? So he said, all right, let me explain this to you. Uh, the most precious terror that I have to give comes from my nigunim, and maybe I'll need to sing it to you again if you didn't hear the terror or the message in the song. And uh, the lyrics of the song. Um, So he explained, he said, we're living in a time where there are so many challenges and obstacles to the faith of yesteryear. There's trauma and negative energies and people doubting love and beauty. And yet, and yet, the younger generation is still, despite all, holding on, not uh, veering off from the truth of what Tara t- teaches us about our own beauty and perfection. At least that's the way I understood it. Now I'm ruining it. Someone pull up the lyrics. Let's go to the Anybody know how this song goes? Oh, you lie not Oh, come on. I don't have it in front of me. In the meantime, so, well, Chaim, Chaim, I just want to ask one, se- one second. Chase, Chase doesn't believe wow. this. I'm actually, oh Rabbi God, Tal doesn't believe this. <laughs> he actually thinks I'm scared of the camera, but I'm not scared of. I'm not really scared of the camera. Um, and he said by the end of the fourth night, we'll get him to make an appearance on the camera. So I'm just going to share something that right now they're holding 333,940. If you either can hear me or you can hear more from Rabbi Tal, but I'm not leaving until we get to 400. No, I'm just joking. Okay. We're not fucking. But, <laughs> we're not leaving. <laughs> but I just wanted to say something, and I, I believe so many people have had this experience with Rabbi Tal. But I had an experience this week with him, a personal experience, which is the night after the first night, start of his campaign. And I would say, as he said today earlier, I don't know why people wait to the last minute, but the first night was, I think we were holding 
if I'm not mistaken, at 60 something thousand when we finished the first night. And if it was me, I don't know about him, but I would be nervous that he was only holding at that number after the first night. Um, it costs to put a production like this together as well. And I had something on my chest. I wanted to speak to him for a long time. But sometimes, you know, you see people like that in the street or even if you know them. And I know him pretty well and I speak to him quite often about different productions that we do together. But I was never, I never wanted to be vulnerable. Um, but I called him up that night. And um, I asked him if he doesn't mind speaking to me. Well, I think it was already 11 o'clock at night. And we spent like 30 minutes speaking. And he said something to me that was a light bulb moment. It had such an impact on me. It made so many things clear in my life. That made things, put things in, so, in such a perspective that I, I wouldn't have necessarily um, be able to get that on my own. And I know how many people, I know family members that listen to his podcast and listen to his shiram and have had um, life-changing moments from him. So one of the questions that I've re been receiving a streak, people know that I'm doing this production because he hasn't stopped saying my name even though I hate it um, for four days straight. Um, David, David this, David that. I try to be on that side of the camera. <laughs> but um, yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, you just totally threw me off. <laughs> um, so I even what was I saying? Oh, so even though I, I, I called out my name, but people people saw me and said, "Why? What is he doing with five hundred thousand? What is he going to do with $500,000? Doesn't he charge for when he speaks at places? And I don't think people really understand. So I'm going to, for like 60 seconds if I can, um, not Rabbi Taub's 60 seconds, my 60 seconds. Um, when you put out content constantly, it costs to keep those things up. It costs to create it. It costs to make sure that people see it in the right way. And even when you're recording, you can see from live, things go wrong. And when you're recording, things have to go into a studio and need to be cut. All these things cost a tremendous amount of money. And when you want to add, you have people running content that you heard from uh, Mrs. Krinsky tonight. Someone saw one clip, and because of that, they started learning Tanya. The effect that families get changed and different people's lives get changed, those things are changing people's lives, literally changing people's lives. So that's why the money is needed. It's not for him to go on vacation with his family, which I hope he does, but uh, that's not what this money is for. This money is for the Yidden all over the world from every single background. You can see who's come on this. It's not just for Chabad people, people from every single background. And you've seen the comments from people, people who have gone off the way of Yiddishkeit because they've been hurt in different ways by different people who feel that someone's talking to them. Um, you save, you know, being in, uh, um, in the medical field a little bit in Hatsala, you hear, if, you know, it's sometimes hard to drive in your car on Shabbos, but you hear if you break one, you save one person's life by breaking Shabbos, you're saving a whole world. And that's what this is. Literally, the Shabbos are being saved. People's lives are being changed. So I urge you, there's not many hours left. The goal is 500,000. And I think we got 333,000 when I started, another thousand since I started speaking. But this is, this is why we're here tonight. This is why we've been here for the last four nights. So I urge you, if you're watching, if every single person that's watching, I think before there was over a thousand people on, if every single person, those thousand, right, gave how much, a hundred dollars? We'd be near our goal. I think we'd actually over here our goal because it's being matched. So if everyone who's watching, even if you donate it, donate again. If you have a friend, call three friends. That's all it is. Two friends. If it's an $18, $36, if it's $10, even I think Rabbi Taub said the first night, if it's $1, every dollar you can be saving a, and a Yitz Neshama, you can be saving a life. So I'm going to go back to putting this on and going back to what I'm meant to be doing. But please, please give. Turn the camera back to Chaim because he's going to continue. Thank you, David. That was a beautiful surprise. I know that's not... Uh natural for you or uh, something that you easily uh, thank you and it's clearly effective look at what's going on here the screen is blowing up 
Yes, we're over the 65% mark. We are going to make it tonight. And I think if someone could get the numbers of the number of donations, um, it's beautiful. Ellie, give us something. By the way, you could still requ re re uh, request a song or dedicate the song uh, to someone else with a wow. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You know, we were supposed to play uh, Truth or we call it Truth or Kula last night with Rabbi Tao because it's not nice. You can say anything you want as so long as it's in Yiddish and it makes it okay. But um, so MS or Kula. And he was so forthcoming with the stuff I was asking, so I didn't even get to dare him on anything. But um, I'm just going to throw one out in a moment. But, Ellie. Yeah. What are you feeling? What's on your heart? Yeah. I got a song here. We're still on the Mashiach theme, right? Mm -hmm. Always Mashiach. Always on Mashiach theme. Know the Solheim? Definitely going to need lyrics to this. I'm not going to do it. By the way, we just got a. Three dollar donation, effective six dollars. Oh. That the it it is uh, is it the d dedication or they wrote it as their name, but it's written. Chaim is so funny. Someone give him a raise. Some. <laughs> what? Wow. How? What would you? How uh -oh, do you raise? They wrote, Chaim is so how funny. How do you raise negative? Exactly. We're gonna take money from you. Maybe I insinuated that when I told Gadalia Miller. Oh, yeah. but. And it was three dollar effective six dollars. Chaim is so funny. Give him a raise. Okay, so <laughs> they love you. The meaning I'll send you a. <laughs> okay. They love you, Chaim. Thank you very much, whoever that is. Is that Yom Teferlach? I'm hearing. It's I've a heard of you. song. I can't read this. A diamond halter, and Kesser, Tayer English ayers come and go te yor hoy no hasho no hayor uner kom zu for in a heisel in a nauter sitz da can't see anything over here i'm sorry guys hi we got the words there pulling it up in a second all right all right Let's take another stab at the Zachar Dover again. Oh, okay. I zechav avoy the dafar le yavedecho. Oy yahuwa la shari chalet ahwani. Oy zoi znechamasi, nechamasi be yawawani. Kimerashe <laughs> Mi tayer aschalay nat yisi ha ya ya mi tayer aschalay nat yisi o yezei di mehli etzoni yehli etzoni yad me yai day mi tayer aschalay nat yisi. I am it, I had a skull, I not ye see. Speaking of which, we have our now consistent nightly guest. 
talking about Mitzayda Solei Natisi, Yeshiva Bacher, and we got a dedication last night, and someone wrote how impressed they were. I with think they Abacher. wrote mm-hmm. the words were, and was it an anonymous? Can we say who wrote it? No, it was anonymous. It was anonymous. Okay, okay. so I'm not going to say who wrote it, but they wrote the Chassidish kite, the Edel kite, the clarity. You remember that? We know who wrote it. Yeah. Well, they wrote. Oh, they wrote their name as. Chaim John's biggest fan, but yeah, what was the reference? J is next to K, so it was like Chaim. Oh, uh, oh so that's what so it's Chaim Cohn's biggest fan. Yeah. I was trying to figure who was Chaim John. Sometimes I go by that, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> In case you don't know him yet, ladies and gentlemen, you thro- no <laughs> Avram Abba. I didn't want to say David Abba, so I tripped myself up. It's saying his brother's name, yeah. Yisrael. Yeah. Avram Abba, brother Nach. In, in whose shadow he had to live. Okay. Ah, uh, Avram Abba is here. Okay. Back. So, uh, you, you ready to uh, sing a duet of uh, of uh, Sonny Boy? Is, is that what we're doing now? Yeah. Well, Chaim and Ellie were singing sentimental uh, duets, so I figured we'll sing a uh, a duet. Ellie, isn't there like some old song called Sonny Boy or something like that? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> okay. For my times. All right. By the way, do you do you know any uh, songs from Abba? Do I know songs? Yeah. Uh, well, not like Bamanagan, but I, I can sing songs. What song could you sing? <sighs> nicely. Yeah. yeah well, it doesn't no. have to be nicely. Let's sing no. from the heart. Sing from the heart. Yeah. Uh, Am I really putting you on the spot yeah. over here? <laughs> yes. Right. We we. We made a promise on Monday that in honor of the memory of Bert Bacharach, which Rabbi Taub either gave an extra three days or... No, 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 not either. Okay, definitely... I gave him extra days. Okay, okay, good. Um, gave him th- three extra days in... In, 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 in this it, world. In this world. Um, and he was a wonderful lyricist. Uh, you you actually know. Hal David wrote the lyrics. He wrote the music. Burt Backrack wrote the music, yes. And um, we said, oh, Rabbi Taub started writing the first verse instead of uh, substituting love. And since tonight's theme is Mashiach, I'll, I'll oh. just remind you. What the world... Oh, can you do it? What the world needs now is Mashiach. Each and every one of us needs to be Ashliach. That's the chorus. Yes. So <laughs> I want I, I, I started writing because for me it was a bit cringe. So I started writing my own. And then I'm like, you know what? Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Perfect. So could you read the, a little bit of this? And then we're going to go back to okay. Avram Abba. But all right, I'll read it. You'll read it? Chat GPT. Can you improvise the lyrics for Burt Bacharach's song, What the World Needs Now is Love, with a Jewish theme? With a Jewish theme? Yeah. You didn't say Mashiach, you just uh, said Jewish well, theme. Well, that's coming. Okay. So he, this was his first stab at it. God gave us... I'm not going to do it with the, uh Could you do it to, to the tune? I could try. Okay. Let me see. And skip around, because we have a one. few different... I'm not sure. Okay. God gave us a promise to Abraham long ago. Blessed us with... Blessed us with a heritage and a land to call our own. But with all the fighting and the hate, it's easy to forget... That the one thing that can save us now is love. Don't you forget. And what the world needs now is ahava. Ahava, sweet ahava. <laughs> no. And it gets much it, better than that. Show it, no- show it to me. Show it to me. I want to see it. What the world needs now is ahava, sweet ahava. It gets ahava. much better than that. Oh then it, next next oh verse. Chat GPT. Moses led us through the sea to the land of milk and honey. To the m- honey. Oh, it's going right? chronologically. It started with Abraham. Now it's at Moses. Okay. And this, in, in that, that and how quick. long did it take? A second. One second. One second. But it's hard to the land of milk and honey. But it's hard to see the sweetness with all the wars that cost so much money. It's oh. like a little political. Uh, so let's put down the weapons and open our hearts with Ahava as our guiding light. We'll never be apart. What the world needs now is Ahava, sweet Ahava. If you can love a neighbor as you love your, our, as you love, your, as we love ourselves, we'll find peace we're searching for on every shelf. Okay. On every shelf. Okay. But the world needs now you know is Ava Ava. I got to tell you something. Chat look- GPT's lyric writing abilities is uncannily similar to a head counselor's color war song uh, lyric. Which brings abilities. me. Oh, Zai Zairo, thank is that you. That's what you were anticipating? Zai I guided him there. So thank you. That was so beautiful. Can you do another one, but 
replacing love with a theme of Mashiach and redemption. It says, sure, here's my attempt at improvising the lyrics to what the world needs now with the Mashiach and redemption theme. Okay. Here's a go. This is crazy. For, for so many years, we've been waiting for the promised land to come. For the promised one to come, sorry. The promised one. The one who bring the redemption and a new era will have begun. Oh, what happened to my... Just... What happened? A new... Okay, a new, you got it again? Crashed. A uh, new era... That has, is so weird. You come in a crash right before you're about to... Will have begun. As we okay. wait and pray and hope, we must never forget, never forget that the one thing that brings him near is love in our hearts. No regrets. What the world needs now is Mashiach. Oh, my God. <laughs> our Mashiach. Oh. It's the one thing that will truly be enough. Mine what the better. world needs now is Mashiach, not just for some, but, but for, for all every, of us. All of us. That's true, by the way. Mashiach is for all of us. Our history has been long and hard. So many tears we've cried, but as you know, the promise is true. As we hold our faith with pride, let us open our hearts with kindness and good. Okay, that, okay, we're just getting started. That's like so beautiful. <laughs> we got I, another couple hours here, guys. I started writing one with the Chabad We're going to get Chaim John singing Chat GPT until we hit 500,000, and we're not kidding. Okay. Right, then he goes, okay, fine. Here's my attempt at us. Uh, so I wrote, can you give us a Chabad Lubavitch version? In the spirit of Camp Gun, you saw Detroit circa 1995. No, that's specific. Yes. That's that specific. And to, to confirm that that's you understood ins- what I meant. Okay. By the way, I... He told you who was head staff that year? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll give it a try. Here's my attempt at a Chabad Lubavitch version, version of what the world needs now with a more introspective and contemplative feel. <laughs> what the world needs now. Because he understood, like, the Detroit, yeah. it was an introspective I didn't even write anything to that this effect. This guy is Chad GPT. I wrote the president. What the world needs now is Mashiach. Every single Jew must feel the pain, must feel the pain we, we watch. We yearn for redemption for a world made new, but we're lost and alone, not sure what to do. What the world needs now is Mashiach with a somber tune and a heavy heart. What the world needs now is Mashiach to give us hope and a brand new start. The world is dark. Our hearts are heavy, but we know that Hashem is with us. Every step, st- every step, steady. So let us cry and pray with broken hearts for Mashiach. He gets to come the and maudlin. Heal all parts. And then I wrote, oh my God, that was even better. Now please, Chabad Lubavitch version with a more optimistic 770 feel. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed my attempt at a Chabad Lubavitch no, version. Now we understand <laughs> subcultures <laughs> within Chabad. I mean. Get out of here. Like, and he does it. He no, does it. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. What the world needs now is Mashiach. Every single Jew must feel the power we watch. <laughs> we know redemption is coming. We feel it in our bones. The Rebbe's teachings as our guide. We won't be alone. This is what good. What the world needs now is Mashiach with a joyful tune and a dancing heart. What the world needs now is Mashiach to show us to do our part. The Rebbe's vision is clear and bright to bring Mashiach now with all our might. We'll reach out to every Jew far and wide with love and kindness as our guide. What the world needs now is Mashiach. All right, and then I you one more. You just put all the Color War songs out of business. He just forget it. Pack your <laughs> bags, man. Um, uh, oh, I, can you compose a song about Mashiach with some of that tunnel vision? Okay, that's already good. Tunnel vision denial of reality sounding something like a anonymous song at a children's rally at 770. Okay, here's my attempt at an original song about Mashiach with a blank style sound with a strong focus on hope and belief. Um, okay, then I get into my own uh, negative uh, you know, stuff. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah. get this, get this. Speaking of, this is what I had a rap with your brother about. Yeah. Start from here. Oh, so just so we know, Chaim Cohn decided to call my brother David today without... Letting me know. So we had a Hava Mina, and we had a great chat. And so fa- maybe we'll, Dove, it's one we'll of the funniest on, guys in the gonna, world. Maybe we'll text and see if we one can of the get smartest on. guys. But look what, look what this. could you read that? Sorry, I misspelled. Who is Itcha Kaduzi? Okay. So Go ahead. I should tell people because Itcha Kaduzi was a character, still is a character. We had a dedication, a donation the that Dove came in before in honor, of, created. Yeah. in honor of David Taub. And thank you for all with oh, uh, Itcha so Kaduzi. Nice. It came in about an hour ago. Amazing. Read okay. that. All right. So, Itchikaduzi is a fictional character in a popular Jewish children's entertainment series of the same name. The series features a puppet named Itchikaduzi who was known for his mischie- mischievous and humorous antics, as well as his messages of Jewish values and teachings. Wow. The series is, is, is it just went out. Oh, what 
Your notes quit unexpectedly. And you you harassed me for having too many tabs open. Ain't that the ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? Okay. That's what Bart Serber said to uh not John Glenn. Um, what's his name? Who punched him? Um what's his name? Walked on the moon. Oh, not, uh, not the other guy, not Armstrong, the other guy. Not what Buzz Aldrin? When Bart Serber got punched by Buzz Aldrin, he said, ain't that the pot called the kettle black? And he got punched. Okay, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Itchy has funny. become a beloved character in many Jewish households and has been a popular part of Jewish children's entertainment for many years. So Chaim wrote, "Nice. Can you tell me something about the man behind the puppets, the creator?" And performer of Itchikaduzi is Rabbi Moshe Storch. He is a rabbi, educator, and performer who has been involved in Jewish, ch- Jewish children's entertainment for many years. Rabbi Storch is the founder of Torah Live, an organization that creates educational videos and interactive programs to teach Jewish values and principles to children and adults. Do you want me to go on? Yeah, because it gets it just doubles down on every wrong. Okay, so Chaim writes, I think you're wrong about that. Who created, produced, and serves as the voice for Ichikaduzi? And there's only one right answer. Ben David probably can Okay. Okay, but continue. Okay. Oh, we got to. Yes, yes, yes. Should I continue reading this? Okay. I think you're wrong about Okay. I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. You are correct that Rabbi Moshe Storch did not create or produce the Ichikaduzi series. The Ichikaduzi series was actually created and produced by the organization Tzivis Hashem, which is a Jewish educational organization. Okay. Okay. We're going to keep right. going. It just goes endlessly. Yeah, he just doubles down. Yeah. But then at one point, once I call him out and get a little, he goes, um, he writes, uh, Okay, crapped out again. But basically, he comes very forthright. He comes, and that's what I was chatting with David about. He's so open to admit his mistakes when he's called out. And then I apologize for being a bit too harsh, and he let me know that he has actually no feelings. I apologize. And he said, I have no feelings. Okay, leave it at a codependent to start apologizing profusely to a bot. All right, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Rabbi in... Training. Training. <laughs> Avraham Abba Tao. Yes. I'm just sending this screenshot to... I'm juggling a lot of stuff over here. I'm sending the screenshots of the Zells. You guys don't even know what's going on here. Uh, so there's offline donations because some people don't want to give the regular on the regular site for whatever reason. So the PayPal's and the, the PayPal's my daughter Tybal sees and she manually enters. The cash apps are on the phone that Schiffer Rabisky has. I hope she forwarded them to, to Tybal. The Zells are connected to the bank account, which I manage. So they go to my business email. So I was just sending a screenshot of a, of another Zell to, uh, to Tybal. So she can manually, uh, enter it because Avram Abba, I want to show you something now that you're here, buddy. Um, um, we are at $337,574, which is 67% of our $500,000 goal. If somebody would just give, I'm going to just do the math really quickly right here. Um, if somebody would just give 500000 minus Three three seven five seven four divided by two. If somebody would just give eighty one thousand two hundred thirteen dollars right now, and you could do it for points, you could put it on a credit card. Eighty one thousand two hundred thirteen. I'm sure there are people. And you'll, and you'll get both oh, and, and by the way, if you do eighty one thousand, there's someone out there right now. I'm sure the internet is so big. There's so many people. There's someone out there who could put eighty eighty one thousand on their credit card. You know what? Don't put eighty one thousand. Leave some for the rest of us. Put eighty thousand. Put eighty thousand. Put eighty thousand on your credit card right now, and you will get the Michel Schwartz lithograph and the Baruch Nachshin lithograph, and you'll be our hero. And we'll. Um, We'll uh, take a publicity photo of you uh, presenting. I'll hand deliver it tonight before I go home. If, You'll ha- nice uh, if you're place. anywhere in the tri-state area. No, I- no you did not see it. In Crown Heights? But, if you have a- but let's not limit it to Crown Heights. No, no, I'm saying if you happen to be or. Okay. I'll, we'll make sure it gets to you. 
Okay. At any rate, so we need somebody to give $80,000 right now, and then we'll be all done. And also, just an update of Ramaba, we're at 950 Seven donors. We're trying to hit a thousand donors. That means we need forty-three. Forty-three okay, the more. Dear, I wanted to give you before when we reach a thousand donors. This is your choice of of, yeah. of colas, right? One, you could read us a recent Amazon product review that you left because I know you're notorious. If anyone's wondering <laughs> who the heck actually writes Amazon, well, I'll tell you something, Chaim. I feel it's a service. God bless you, honestly. And I, I do, you've buy never left an Amazon review. About a hundred items a day. Never in my life have you I done it. Never left an Amazon I'm review. A, I am not. I'm the passive. I left an I Amazon review, the... and I got heckled about my Amazon review. I bought a universal oh, okay. charger adapter to bring with me to, on a speaking tour to the UK and Europe. It was this crazy GoBot Transformers contraption that was like had made of like five, six different pieces. And I couldn't get it to work. And finally, I, I figured out how it's supposed to be, but it just didn't exactly fit. And so it was basically useless. So I, oh, yeah, I left the review. Okay, so now wrote, you gave it to us. So effectively. Well, hold, on, hi, hold on a second. I'm telling you how I got heckled. I wrote a review. I'm from Amba. Scooch in here, okay? Do you know about this, Avram Amba? Because you have, seem to know all of my stuff. I know almost everything. You know, so do you know about this? No. Okay. Because this was too petty to repeat to anybody. Um, I wrote a review and I said, if it doesn't work in UK, then it's useless. You know what? Someone's going to figure out my Amazon name by Googling this review. And it's okay. I don't care if you know my Amazon name. And if you figure out my Amazon name, you tell me what the reference is. Of my Amazon name, at any rate. So uh, I wrote. Then th this this product is use. If this doesn't work in the UK, then it's useless. And somebody wrote as a comment. I'm I'm not making this up, Ellie. Another Amazon. I thought we were a community. Another Amazon user wrote. If you can't figure out how to make this work, then your brain is useless. I downvoted it. Oh my goodness! Well, so that 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 uh, cool is uh, effectively out because you already gave it to us. Your other two options are this: that is, when yeah. we reach a thousand donors, you have an option to. We have a special guest. You have an option to one, um, make a literal kula. Two, you can um, give us the first five YouTube recommendations on your feed, besides your own, besides your own uh, soul words. Not comfortable. But, with okay, that. or. You can choose any contact from your phone of someone you have not spoken to in five years or more. I have such people. Probably many. Um, and you have to invite Randomly them. Randomly call them? Or invite them live to donate. If they don't pick up, you can leave a voicemail. And be like, we'll this is kind of awkward. We haven't spoken in five years, exactly. but I'm running a campaign right now. Exactly. Okay. That's, those are your options, okay? We're going to be okay. there. A real cooler. When we, re when we reach 1,000 donors. Yeah. It, uh, David won't let the coolers. Okay, coolers because out. you're so going to trip on a cord and then the pull YouTube the whole thing out. Reading. Pull up your YouTube recommendations or or call somebody you haven't spoken to in five years and ask for a donation. Yes, live. Okay, no pro live. Okay, all right. Can oh. we have someone on Zoom? This is delightful. Look who we have. Is can people see him? Yeah, they can. People can see him. Can I talk to him? Can I interact with him? Talk, David. Talk, here, talk. Yeah. All right, I, I just ah, unmuted myself. Okay, fine. Hi. 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 So, David, this is such a delightful surprise. Um, and Mir Tashem, I'm going to see you on Sunday. Yes. I, I have I'm Mazel Tov. Excited. I'm Mazel Tov. Um, and uh, on the bas mitzvah. I, um, I'm going to, what? Well, yeah, we'll do some voices in a second. I'm, I'm going to L.A. Uh, at 7.30. I have a flight to L.A. And then Matzah Shabbos, I have a flight out of LA, I figure out where it stops over, and and, and Mir Tzashem coming to Pittsburgh for the bas mitzvah, and I'll probably be on time, God willing, if everything goes smoothly. At any rate, so David said, he knows what people like. Um, yeah, could you do some chikadusy voices? Uh, do you want me to get the puppet? He's Oh, right yeah, get the puppet, sure. You're going to borrow him from Moshe Storch? 
<laughs> I don't know if you heard that one. That was a good one. That was a zinger. That was a good zinger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a pathological liar. What he spoke about, uh, oh. Chaim. Nobody heard any of those gems. Story of my life. I want to rem- ask David about some of the insight he had about Mashiach and ChatGPT's ag- uh, uh, arrogance. I'm going to ask him a second about the, the, but now he has the puppet. By the way, the your focus on your webcam is having trouble with the two different depths of you and Itcha. Okay, yeah, just reveal the whole thing. Okay, that's good. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, I turned, I turned off the, the the blurry background. That's good. Okay, so we have Ichikaduzi here. Oh, hi. Uh, it's an honor to be here live on the Shesathon. Now, Itcha, we want to thank you because we understand that you took a break from your own campaign. Uh, yes, yes, we have a campaign going on right now um, at the Ira ne- and Edna Bernstein first annual toilet repair charity campaign.com slash org i actually heard that it's no longer called the iron edna bernstein jewish community center that's that, that is true we uh, yes i mean i don't yeah yes yeah it's now uh, uh it's the it doesn't really iron, roll off your tongue you're not used to it yet i'm not used to it yet and uh and it's based yeah. on a very unfortunate situation Gefilte Fish bought uh, about 107 domain names a few years ago uh, for various different causes, and we use those. So even though we changed the name, it's now the Ira Bernstein and Edna uh, Rosenzweig Bernstein Jewish Community Center. Uh, we, um, we, we still have the domain name previously because Gefilte Fish bought 107 of them. So you still use the old domain name? Yeah, I'm not going to get new ones. We have 100 and we pay thousands of dollars a year for all of them. You're not even sure how many there are. You just keep no, paying I those GoDaddy I, I bills. About every three days, we get a renewal <laughs> notification uh, in the emails. Uh huh. And why is it? It used to be called the Ira and, Ed- Ira and Edna Bernstein Jewish Community Center. Now it's called the Ira Bernstein and Edna Rosenzweig Bernstein. Jewish Community Center. What's that about? Ira Burns, Ira and Edna have gone separate ways, but I don't want to get into their personal lives. Um, But but, I think people deserve to understand so that they could try to at least say the name properly. Well, yeah, I I don't want to get into their personal life um, because, I mean, it used to be, I talked about Ira Bernstein publicly and you know that cost me a donor now i do it it cost me two donors <laughs> but i understand that ira bernstein actually is not a self-made man that edna bernstein's father ran a felt company in baltimore and father what oh his father yeah whose father edna's father Edna's father ran the company. Yes, and that's where the m- the money was from. So Ira married into it. It was never his money. He he made it. He made some money on horses. <laughs> bet he bet on horses. A little, I don't know. He said he made money on horses. It could be he bet. Could be he sold them to a glue factory. I don't know. <laughs> You're not really sure. Okay. No, I'm not. I know they had a few horses on their property. Always- no, no, just in the backyard. <laughs> when you would come visit the Bernsteins, when I would come visit, and I, I would have to raise money. And now I'm getting, yeah, you've, you've, you've gotten me talking. But I would come to raise money, as you are right now, for all of your good things that everybody should give money to. Okay, I just gained us another two minutes. Um, and then, yeah, I would sit there in the living room, and horses would just come right up to the living room window. And they would one one time I had a cookie in my hand and the horse just ate it. I made a bracha, and then the next second the cookie was gone. Because the the horse ate the cookie. Yes, yes. And then and then I looked in the other hand. I had another cookie. I was double handing the cookies, and then the other cookie was gone. But that wasn't the horse. Um, I really had taken that. <laughs> uh huh. 
Okay. He said, if you, if you don't know how to be responsible with the first cookie, <laughs> you can't have the second cookie. He didn't trust you with it any longer. That was lesson number 203 of Ira's lessons. I, he asked me to take them down in a notebook, which I, I keep in my bedside table. And you would, uh huh. So he, he was, he was, you consider Ira not just a supporter, but a teacher of yours. But a, a confidant. Yeah. Confidant. Yes. Yeah, a very good friend. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, why should people give to the Soul Words campaign? Do you know what I do? Um, I, I assume that you teach Tyra. I'm, I, I, honestly, I'm not an internet guy. <laughs> okay. We're doing, I heard that you, you use the internets. Yes, we use the internet to reach people and teach them Torah. Uh, yeah, I've heard your name all around. Anytime we talk about smart people in Lubavitch, you come up. I know that you're doing good things. I just I can't see it because I don't know how to watch video on the internet. <laughs> uh huh. But you heard good things about I've it. I've heard good, very good things. Yeah. I know that you're helping people and you're teaching people, and that's beautiful work. Okay. And we're trying to raise five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That's a reasonable amount. I should not have reacted like that. What was the biggest one lump sum that, that you ever got from Ira Bernstein? Oh, wow. Um, the largest lump sum I ever got from uh, Ira Bernstein was actually a million dollars. Oh, so what are you getting all taken aback by 500K? You got no, a million It's in ones. a trust fund, and I, I don't get <laughs> access to it unless I adhere to all of the rules in the notebook. <laughs> Well, how do they determine? If I adhere to all of the the rules, then I get a certain amount. Well, how do they determine that you're adhering to the rules, like like being responsible with cookies and such? How do they actually determine that? And just at at the kiddish, he he looks me up and down and uh, watches me a little bit, and then you know some weeks he'll nod and some weeks he'll nod, and uh, you know if I get one of those, I know it's going to be a bad year. <laughs> Oh, he can take from the trust fund depending on how he. No, it's it. it's all or nothing. Oh, every year on Rosh Hashanah, <laughs> not on Rosh Hashanah, but like around. Right. So Adam Nidain Bechol Shana. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's very real for me. I forgot <laughs> to send him. I forgot to send him honey sticks one year, and that was it. You did honey I, sticks. I give honey sticks to all of my donors who who uh, no, all of my big donors, which is one now two actually. <laughs> And um, now two big and, donors. Yes, two big donors. Because uh, Ira Bernstein and, and Edna Ro Rosenzweig Bernstein. Bernstein. Yes. Yeah. I forgot to give him honey sticks. And then, then the next year, it was very difficult to afford the honey sticks. <laughs> but I had to do it. It was an investment. You, you got to spend money to make money. That's what that's they say. Right. That's right. You got to spend honey to make money. You got, oh, oh, that's good. That was slick. Itch you. You got to spend honey to make some money. Oh, so what you saying? Thank you. That was good. That was very, yeah, very. I smooth. learned that from a beekeeper. I stole it. That, that wasn't my joke. <laughs> you heard that joke from a beekeeper? Oh, that was yeah. like his line that he always say. Well, you got to spend money to make honey. Yeah, he would say it the other way. You got to spend money to make honey. I flipped it. Uh huh. And you would say you got to spend honey to make money. That's right, because of the honey stick situation. I've thought about that. I was lying awake one night a couple of years ago and thought about the beekeeper and about the situation with Ira. And I thought, you know what? I could use that sometime if I'm ever on a Zoom call during a, uh, a fundraising campaign. You know, from everything that you hear, you have to learn a, a path in Aveda Sashem. That's I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Well, so do you have something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was it, but... Okay, this is amazing. Um, by the way, David, are there any other puppets around? Um, yeah, John was around somewhere in the back, and, and Larry Goldstein is around. While you're looking for a puppet, if it'll take you less than 30 seconds, I'm just going to put out a pitch about money. All right. Okay, because that's actually. Which, which one do you want? Whatever you grab first, doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, it's just a convenience. Okay. So I just want to say. That just to update everybody, Abba, you still here? Still here. You got to speak still. into this and to be fully here. Okay, fine. So Abba is here. That that's this is Abba's uncle. You know, David is uh, Abba's uncle. Is my uh... oh wow! Somebody just sent me a text. Uh, for he said, put me down for eighteen hundred. Amazing, amazing. Okay. 
Okay, one second. I just sent him his own name because I'm all flustered because I'm trying to entertain you guys while I'm doing this. This is what we need the money for. Um, Abba, you want to stall while David, while I'm sending Tybal the money to enter and you're uh, and David is getting the puppet? Abba, say something cute. Okay, uh, something cute. Well, usually I read the tomorrow's schedule, but it seems like... There is no, yeah. Schedule, but yeah. I realize there is a schedule for tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually the two-minute Dvartaira. That's that's on the schedule. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I have to do my two-minute Dvartaira. <laughs> no, yeah. not, not today's stress. Tomorrow's stress. Right, tomorrow's stress. Okay. okay. And then the next day on the schedule is you repeat that Dvartaira to your family. But I'm not going to be home for Shabbos because I'm not going you. to L.A. Well, not necessarily you. But, but whoever who listens, listens to it, it can use it. That's on the schedule. That's amazing. That's yeah. so true. That's so true. Okay. David's back with a puppet. I just want to do a money update. Um, the money and the honey. Okay. Um, we're up to $338,918. We actually made $11,000 in the last hour, which is pretty cool. Um, somebody could still just take care of all that in one fell swoop. If you do, I forget with the number or the amount, but here's what we're up to. We ha- And we have David with a puppet, and it's only going to get more and more hilarious. We're up to 969 uh, individual donors. So we would love to hit a thousand. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna tell everyone the rules. We're gonna leave the campaign open um, while um, I'm gonna confirm. I shouldn't say this before I confirm it that the matching will con- the matchers will continue matching till. Uh, I'll see if I can keep it going for it. We're, we're not doing any more live streams. We're, we're done with that. But uh, we're going to see if the matches will continue matching while we leave the campaign open for a little bit. Uh, we're going to wrap up the live stream soon. But if we could get to 1,000 donors tonight, that would be super meaningful. Uh, if you could just keep don- donating any amount. Okay. And now, Jono. Rabbi, you- rabbi, rabbi. Okay, so oh, you're a different rabbi than yeah. I'm used to. Yeah, how you doing, Jano? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, sir? Baruch Hashem, I'm very. <laughs> Jano, why is it that anything you say, even if it's just benign, it, it's so funny? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, it just just started when I was a little kid. I would say things, and people would laugh at me, and uh, and I don't, I don't know. And I'm that actually... just became your personality. I guess so. I'm I'm a very serious man, I think. How do you feel about the fact that everyone finds you hilarious? I like it. I don't understand it, but I like it. <laughs> uh-huh. Would you like to get attention for something else? Would you like to be known for something other than being hilarious? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I would like attention for anything anybody's willing to give me attention. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Um, you know, Jano you used to talk about more in the early, early episodes that you were in film school. I, I am. <laughs> you still are. Okay. Yeah. I, yep. Yep. I have not yet graduated. I'm working on it. <laughs> How many more credits do you need? Um, a lot. All of them. <laughs> um, all, of, all, of, um, all of my final projects are, um, are always films about a rabbi sleeping and then getting suddenly woken up by somebody filming them while they're sleeping. Um, <laughs> uh huh. So, those those are like found footage films. Yes, that's the genre, found footage. Um, and I, in uh, the pr- first professor accepted it the first time. Um, I got one credit, uh, or three, or however many they give you for a class. Um, a hundred, whatever they do. And then, um, and then I haven't gotten any more since. Okay, excellent. And you're at the Jay Shandamonia School of Motion Pictures? Uh, moving Pictures, yes. What's it called? The full the name? Jay Shandamonia Academy of Moving Pictures. Okay, very good. Who is Jay Shandamonia? An eccentric billionaire. <laughs> and he started his own f- Academy of Motion Picture, Moving Pictures? Yeah, and he has his, and his own production company and studio as well. And several other businesses. I think he's got a pharmaceuticals company. Okay. Why do you and, uh, why do you think he has a pharmaceutical company? Um because on campus they're always giving out free samples. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. He has representatives there. Yeah, he's got reps. They give you free pens and stuff, but they're they're expecting you to, you know, get a prescription. 
Eventually, yeah. Uh huh. Okay, uh, Jono, what was? I, your, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just I thought maybe that was insensitive because some of the work you do is recovery re- related, but the the pharmaceuticals are like for um for like you know um, uh, upset bladder and stuff so it's not like the normal things that people well you know do. i i like i'm a rabbit everybody including people with upset bladder so that could be also be offensive right i'm just saying that not many people have addictions to those <laughs> right now pe- not many people are addicted to right right so the 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 pills that I am flippantly referencing are not ones that n- are normally associated. It didn't ruin anyone's life. Yes. Not, not in a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Um, great. Jono, what is your, your per, you know, uh, your fans have many. By the way, it, it did kind of mess up my life because I, because I took way too many and then it was weeks, no matter how much water I would drink. <laughs> Wait, what, what? You started taking. Too pills much? for yes. upset bladder. Yes. How do you know that's what they told you it was for? Um, yeah, that's what they told me it was for. And uh, are we still connected? You're a little bit chopping. You're a little bit frozen. <laughs> Maybe your internet connection Uh-oh. is a little unstable. Oh, but we hear you. We still hear you, but your your picture's frozen. Oh, now you're back with us. So, what? Yeah. How did your slippery slope into this hell of? Well, I I started taking it because they were giving it out, and it was you know it's hey it's free, and um and I took way too much. It was just after the rabbi had taught me the the bracha asher yatsar, which <laughs> I, I was really excited about because I thought it was really funny that there was a bracha to say after going to the bathroom. But then I didn't get a chance to say it for about three and a half weeks. <laughs> oh, it makes you not be able to go to the bathroom. Yeah, because it's for pe- yes, it's <laughs> oh, people. Yes. It's for people too. who have to go too often. No, it's not to give you an excited bladder. <laughs> okay. So it, it but you, you you went off it now and you're back to normal. Yeah, yeah. And everything's everything's hunky dory now. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to hear because you're a young man, Jono. You shouldn't have those problems. Thank you. Thank you. I am a young man, <laughs> despite having been in film school for about 20 years. Yeah, but you don't age because you're a fictitious character. That's right. That's how fictitious characters work, and also because I don't understand math. <laughs> that's right. We, we know that's canonical, that you don't understand yeah. math. It's canonical that you have a crippling learning disability, which the audience is supposed to laugh at. Because uh, I'm the one who who jokes about it, and then I'm I'm allowed to because it's me. Although I am fictitious, so maybe then it's not okay because it's somebody else writing the joke for me. Now I'm all confused. <laughs> okay, uh, Jono, we're trying to uh, raise money over here. I know you're not good with numbers, but we're trying to bring in five hundred thousand dollars. Do you have a concept of what kind of money that is? Yes, I yes, I do have a concept of what kind of money that is. Um, that is more money than it costs to buy uh, juice at the store. Okay, yes, correct. Um, it's less money than uh, it cost when I accidentally um, bought a, a closed down shopping mall. You bought a closed down shopping mall? Yeah, there's like you know, half a dozen of them around here and I accidentally bought it. It's a long story. Uh-huh. But I have my own laser tag place now, <laughs> which is good because I was kicked out of all the other ones. <laughs> Why were you kicked out of laser tag places? Because I'm not 12. <laughs> oh, you would do laser tag with They're the kids? Ages. Uh-huh. They're ageist. They're ageist. That's ageism. They yeah, want... that not mine. My <laughs> laser tag place is not ageist. That's very interesting, Jana, because I think it's canonical. I had Ira Bernstein in there, and, and I won. How old is Ira? Um, I think like four bajillion. <laughs> okay, you have no idea. I'm sorry, it's a numbers question. I, it is canonical in the Ichikaduzi universe that you play tag in the hallway during Rosh Hashanah service. Not laser tag, though. That's not allowed. Oh, that's good that you know that, Jano. Yeah, I well, because the rabbi had to put up a sign that said no <laughs> laser tag in Rosh Hashanah. Uh huh. Because you made a mistake, but you then you learned. There was one person who made a mistake. I'm not going to name <laughs> names, but it was it's my name. <laughs> okay, but you didn't make the mistake again. I don't want to embarrass anybody, so I'm not going to name any names. Okay, 
Fine. Excellent. And but it was me, and I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> so we're trying to raise $500,000. Any, I'm not going to even try to explain that to you. But um, also what we're trying to do is hit 1,000 donors. We have 975 donors. Oh, very nice. We just got a $1,000 effective donation from Pita Pina. Uh, keep up the great work. Now, I want to tell you, Pita Pina means the pita corner. Pina is a corner, okay? And a pita is a form of Middle Eastern bread often used for sandwiches such as falafel. So I have a but friend... But pitas don't have corners. <laughs> You're right. You're... <laughs> there is no such thing as a pita pina. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're right because pitas are round and they don't have corners. That is some profound. Do. Right? Does the rabbi eat the square matzahs? Uh, every day, but not Pesach. Oh, so you learned that. And what do you do on Pesach? You eat whatever he eats. Uh, yeah. I uh, well, yeah, and and whatever is on the seder plate, I nibble at. <laughs> Does he mind if you? I, I, this might be a very technical question for a lot of people, but at the rabbi's seder. Does he mind if you dip the matzah into the soup? Um, he minds if I dunk the soup onto people. I know that. Okay. Um, but he didn't. Uh, he never said anything about putting matzah into the soup. He doesn't say anything about anything I do at the seder as long as I'm there. Oh, that's one. That's wonderful. And and within a radius, there's like a 15 foot radius that I can be within playing tag or what have you. But um, not laser tag because it's young. Laserless tag. Laserless and, tag, which and, is just yeah. tag. And so as long as I'm in within a certain ra- ra- radius, then it's okay. That is amazing. You know, uh, P- so, so Pita Pina just did it. Show me that again. A $1,000 effective donation. And I have a concept that I want to do. This is actually very serious. I, I mean, I know that we've been joking around. But I want to do like a, a sheer at Pita Pina. Uh, it's my new favorite restaurant. And th- you're right. Pitas don't have corners. But this is where you go on the corner of Kingston and St. John and you get yourself a delicious pizza. And uh, I recommend everyone to go hang out at Pizza Pina. That's where the after party is going to be, uh, if Peretz will let us in. Um, okay, so at any rate, we're up to 976 donors. It, we need 24 donors to get to 1,000 donors. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of wrap up the show because the crew would like to go to Pizza Pina already. Um, and maybe we'll do like this. So, David... You are wonderful. I will, uh, beyond words, I'm so glad that Chaim brought you on. I did not want to bother you because you're making a bas mitzvah for your daughter on, on, on Sunday, and I figured you probably have, you're probably blowing up balloons or something. You're probably busy. Um, I will see you on Mitzvah Shem on Sunday. God bless you. Thank you so much. And by the way, I was at the oil all day today, and when I was at the oil, of course, I mentioned you, your whole family, and of course, I mentioned the bas mitzvah, and... Uh, I, I, I thank you really, really from the bottom of my heart, and thank you for all the I, – I, I just should tell you, I got a text while you were improvising from Mendy Kasowitz, who's a shliach in New Jersey and a good friend of mine. He wrote, David is freaking hilarious. So, okay, and you are. Okay. We're going to go to Avram Abba. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I noticed that- oh, wow. <coughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, that is crazy. Just one second. I have to send this to Tybal. Amazing. I just got a donation of $7,200, which is effective $14,400. That is huge. And I want to tell you who it is from. It is from... Yassel and Stera Gutnik. And Hashem should bless them with all forms of revealed good in their lives and their families' lives. And that is very significant. That's a very significant gift. It's a very meaningful gift. Um, and I'm very touched. Wow, that is... Okay, not just the size of the gift, but the the Yisav Yitzchok Hakoyin Gutnik is a pillar of so much good uh, in this world. So many of the things that 
we, I, I, you know what? Let me just speak about uh, for 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 a second. Let me let me speak about Rabbi Gutnick. Um, I really do believe that he revolutionized philanthropy in Lubavitch, and a lot of the stuff that we take for granted today are breita hasogas, and everything that we achieve and that we set out to achieve. Really, he made that paradigm shift because he was giving crazy big gifts when when people weren't even thinking that big, and he changed the whole game. And I, I, all of us, anyone, I want to tell you something, anyone for sure in Chabad, but beyond Chabad as well, who fundraises, the fact that we even think about the numbers that we think about and the size of the projects that we tackle is in great part due to the Gutniks and their philanthropy. So Hashem should just bless them with all good. Okay, and... Uh, okay, Avram Abba. Okay. Um, so I noticed over the past four days, a lot of people were saying, "Thank you for the effect you've had on them." So yeah. I want to, I want to do that also because oh I feel goodness. like that's the right thing to do. So a lot of people only started ha- having, um, you, you only started having effect on people in the middle of their lives, as opposed to me. You had an effect on me from the beginning of my life. So thank you for that, and an ongoing effect for about seventeen plus years now. So. That's that's and probably been, your longest been, helping. The, the, well, you have older siblings. Oh, <laughs> they remind you of that. <laughs> yes. But they don't let me help them. No, okay. no they do. They do. Yes. Um, and I just want to say that you help me in all the ways that you help everyone else and more. And I really thank you for that. Can I tell you why that is extremely meaningful to me to hear that? Because one of my great fears, and you probably know this because you know so much about me and you're also very perceptive. One of my great fears is that I'm so busy giving so many things to so many other people, I wonder if I end up giving more to strangers than to my own children. So that's a... Well, there's more strangers proportionately, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mathematically, this works out. There's uh, more of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, the the things you've taught me and the things we've learned together and everything that I have, probably 90 plus percent of it comes from you and everything else that even you don't have, big I have because... That's correct, <laughs> that by correct. the way. I have all your potential. So Chazal, tell us. You. <laughs> yes, and you've already outdone me, by the way. You already have, and you should continue to outdo me. What Avram Abba is referencing is the concept that our sages tell us of Yafa Koyach Haben Mina Of, that the son's potential surpasses the father. Now, how could that be? He gets his, his potential from his father. No, because when a father has a child, he doesn't just transmit to his child his actual abilities, but he transmitted, the father transmits to his child even his potential, meaning unrealized potential. So because of that, the child can actually fulfill things and actualize things that the father did not. Although, to quote Carl Jung, who said that everything he got was based on the Mesitra Magid, uh, I think he said the greatest source of neurosis in a person are the unrealized dreams of their parents so no pressure great (laughs) sure Um, yeah so we're wrapping up over here um you have any other uh messages to to wrap it up uh people you the campaign's still open campaign's still open well we have 985 we have 985 and we'll get what and there's pita pina coming is he really are you joking you're serious parrots is bringing it over Somebody's bringing pita pina? Yeah. The crew worked so hard. Baruch Hashem, we're the greatest crew. And we're at 321 Motion Studios. If you ever want to do four days with, with Chase, you, yeah, or you can you hire uh, David to, to, to produce. He'll come in from Florida for you. And uh, yeah, 321 Motion. Okay, how about this? Why don't we uh, go out with, uh, with, a, with some music? <laughs> yeah? I have a question. Yeah? It's op- I'm, I have to call my mattress to make sure they're going to continue matching. Uh, so we're going to, for right now, I'm leaving it open. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to leave it open as long as possible so that the if money gets If we get to matched. 500, if we get to 500 before yeah. it closes, yeah. can you do a live stream celebratory Fabrengan next week? Yes. Just throwing yes. it? Yes. Yes. You will do that? Yes. Okay. That's some good motivation. 
Okay. But we're not closing until we get to 1,000. We're so close. Any minute we're going to hit 1,000. Okay, Ellie's going to do a song, and we're going to get 1,000, and we're going to say goodnight. And then you have to do the- And uh, then I'll do a kula. The ver- yeah. But Dove it doesn't allow. Not a literal the, one. You can choose the figurative kula, call... which the symbolic kula, which will be I'm going to call somebody I haven't spoken to five years and ask for a donation, and I'm going to do a fabrengan uh, next week. That's right. Ella Marcus, possible dream. Not really. Somebody, did we get any donations for for song requests? Did we get did song we? request donations? How about I? Is anyone monitoring that? An English song. Don't worry about the copyright strikes. Do whatever you, do whatever you got to do. Do you want to pick a song? In the dark, frigid cellar. Ninety-five donors. Do do one more song so we can get to a thousand. One more song. Who wants to pick a song? Yerushalayim. Remembers the words. I pick songs I don't know the words to. <laughs> Yerushalayim harim sovi. Nine ninety six. Yerushalayim here. Shel shalom. Yerushalayim. Nine ninety seven. We're coming home. Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, oh, 
Yerushalayim, Oira, Shem, No, He Love. Ah, 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 Oira. Yerushalayim, Oira. Yerushalayim, Oira. Yerushalayim, Oira, Shem, No, He Love. Oh, Yerushalayim, Oh, Yerushalayim. For Him, Savi, for Him, Savi, Blah. Vahashem, Savi, Savi, Bliyamo. We're Need one more donor, one more donor. We're at 9.99. If you gave, you can give again. One oh one, one thousand and one. We did it. Woo! Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Ali. Wow. Oh, by the way, I, I brought something for you. I never believe such a star of the Jewish music world didn't own his own tie. Last live stream, I gave you a tie, and it's really literally the only tie that you own, and you I, you wore it at my daughter's wedding. And I brought you, it with me. And you brought it with uh, you? Yes. Yeah. Nice okay. But nice. then you told me that your wife advised you, and that's what a wife is for. She said, you can't wear a black tie with a blue suit. Sometimes you wear a blue suit. So I got you three blue ties. Avram Abba, bring it over. To Ali, three blue ties. Thank you. Yes, oh that's yeah. Because, and I'll be. I tell everyone that I wear every Shea style. Tie. <laughs> I'll be really looking do. out for the blue ties in your next uh, album cover. Okay, we're at a thousand two. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to tell you that this is a. A little bit stressful, yeah. We still have some money to raise. I think it'll come in. I'm going to see if the matchers will leave the campaign open and continue matching your dollars. So please keep giving. Don't stop giving. And I want to thank everyone, everyone, from our matchers to those who gave large gifts, to those who gave any size gift, every one of you who took the time to show that the work that I do means something to you, and to, to, to show up for me and to I, – I want you to know that this keeps me going, not just in the tangible sense of the funds allow me to expand my work. Yes, of course, that's why it's a fundraiser. But I want you to understand on an emotional level the vote of confidence that this is to me, and, 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 and this is my motivation. You keep me going. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And may Hashem bless every one of you and all of your families with nothing but revealed blessings and the ultimate, re uh, the ultimate revealed blessing that it should be already Mashiach now. Amen.